Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. Jesse. <clears throat> Jesse. Yes, Adam Wilde. Jesse, I have a question for you, sir. I have an answer. Okay. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday last week in Toronto. How cold was it? Oh, God. It was it like, was like being on Mars. Yeah, yeah. I want you to describe the cold. Like, how did it make you feel personally when you when you stepped outside and had to walk to the bus or to the or to the subway to get to work? All right. Um, or the streetcar. You take the streetcar. The women can't relate to this, <laughs> but have you ever been punched in the testicles? <laughs> yes, I have. It was like Mother Nature was repeatedly punching you in the testicles. In the testicles, okay. But your testicles are your entire body. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's what it felt like. So, Jesse, would you say that that is a great time to start jogging? <laughs> um, one, I believe it's pronounced jogging. Ah, correct. Mm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Two... New year, new me. Any time is a great time to start jogging. Because our good friend Steve Dangle decided that he would start jogging in minus 40 degrees. Gotta get those steps in. Weather. I'm at 9,600. We're about to get some vibrations. Because he got a Fitbit Here, for you know, Christmas. I'm going to see if I can hit 10,000 by the time. Keep going. Talk about what you're talking about. Just have your little conversation there. Adam. Well, why are you walking around? You can just walk I'm in place. I'm trying to hit 10,000 steps. How many more do you have to go? I got uh, uh, about uh, 350 now. Why don't you just step in place, though? I don't understand why you're walking no, around the studio. It, it knows. It knows if you're not. Uh, it if knows if you're just stepping in place. That you can't bullshit the Fitbit. You can't. What? Why are you looking at me, mom? So how many times have you jogged since uh, since that cold weather jog? Minus forty degrees. Uh, like four. Yeah, I, I went out when it was minus twenty. It sucked. It sucked a lot. I don't know why people do it regularly. But I'm trying. I, mean, jo- I feel about that, that about jogging in general. Is it sucks, and I don't know why people do it. Yeah, but no, I agree. Yeah, but I mean, I understand the reason why you have to do it. It's like math homework. It sucks, and I don't know why people do it, but you have to. Well, every spring, I'm like, this is when I jog regularly. I'm gonna do it, and I do it three times. I'm like, this is bad, and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but now I figure I can build up to it really slowly, and like, like I can run one kilometer and be like, ah. But I ran out in the cold. That's more than most people. And then by the time spring's around, I'm like, oh, 2K, this is nothing. And then I'm going to be skinny mini, and I'm going to get a modeling career, and I'm going to leave you guys behind, and I'm never going to call you again. You're not going to have to make videos anymore that don't get monetized. Thanks, YouTube. What? Why? Why? That pissed me off so much, that ruined my day. So you posted a bit just for context. Yeah, sorry. Tell us. What happened? I posted an LFR video. Where With I, all the swearing and pornography in it, of course. I go out of my way to make, like, that is the clean, those are the clean ones. Mm-hmm. This is where I'm a maniac. Yeah, this is the calm me. And, uh, uh, yeah, this is where I swear and go potty mouth and whatever. LFR is nice and clean. And friggin', they demonetized the video. I uploaded it on private, though. And... It, it, the video had been up not even two minutes, and it was immediately flagged. Oh, potentially inappropriate now, content, is unsuitable. That, for is that from a member of the community that does that? Like, how does that happen? No, it couldn't be because it was uploaded on private. No one had seen it, so it would have had to have been a YouTube like algorithm. So it's checking the volume levels. Uh, no, it couldn't have been because every video of mine would have got flagged. So I, I, I think it must look for key words, and I don't piss. Piss is the worst word I used in that video today. Toilet? Possibly friggin'? I don't think so, though. Does anyone consider friggin' a curse? Anyone? I don't think so. Anyway. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's it's actually in the Newfoundland Dictionary. So, you you know, it's 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 part of their, their language. It's a, it's one of their city councilors. Councilor friggin'. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Can, Councilor Jim friggin'. Um, no, and, and so on top of it not being monetized, like, that's that's... Can't you challenge that? You can challenge it, but then you get thousands of views that aren't monetized, and that's a pain in the ass. But the part that pissed me off the most is subscribers didn't get a notification that the video's up. So the video's got like a fraction of the views. I got people tweeting me, where the hell's the video? So I want when, people to see so the so thing that I spend time on. So when your video's flagged, it doesn't get it, you don't get a notification? I don't know. Th- th- apparently not. This is the first time it's happened to me, and I don't know why it happened. 
Boy. It must make you happy to know that Logan Paul got more subscribers in the last week than you've ever had, period. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> Wednesday. He gained more subscribers. Wednesday, yeah, which is one or two days after the notorious uh, dead body video that he posted. Uh, he gained 80,000 subscribers, according to Philip DeFranco. And I, I, have, I have 73. <laughs> I've been doing this for over 10 years. Existential crisis happening right now for sure. I am. I've I've been having an existential crisis recently. Like I just I need to like I need to reevaluate what I'm doing with my YouTube channel. Do you? I, I, I want to make it I want to make it better. Like I'm not going, "Oh, maybe maybe I shouldn't be doing this." No, I need to be doing this more and I need to be doing it better. Like I need to soundproof that room. Like I there I need to be able to record videos at night. I, uh, you need a microphone. Yeah, I need a microphone because they sound like crap. Jesse lent me a lav mic, and if it works out, I'm gonna buy one of my own. Like like a grown up, I need to get a lighting setup because it's annoying me that my little Pixar lamp with printer paper over it is my lighting setup. Yeah, we have better I, lights for this show. Like I I don't know. It's you know what it, what it is. Before I got my DSLR camera, um, I was like, wow, I'm so far behind everybody. And now I look at my videos that I thought look crisp for like a really long time and I go, I'm falling behind again. Time to upgrade. It is time to upgrade, but damn it, man. It's expensive. Oh, uh, welcome Not to really. business, man. I know. It sucks. <laughs> welcome to running a business. It sucks. That's what it is. Yeah, but like the last time. Like, like that's why I we have lights. And now, I didn't have a mortgage. A year and a half ago, two years ago, we didn't have video for this show. Now we have two cameras and three lights. And neither of them are mine. And you got the lights, so thank you for that. Like, also, I don't Jesus. think it's that expensive to upgrade. No, I don't think you. Things that don't bad. cost as much anymore. A camera's like a G. Yeah, but it? you have a camera that can produce 1080p, and all you need is a forty dollars lav mic and a couple lights. Probably a better. You probably lens too. Well, lenses are what's expensive. Yeah, you have a body, but I do have a body, but like that's the, that's the cheap part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just I don't know. I've I've had. You ever have a conversation that screws your head? Yeah. Yeah. Um, every day. <laughs> no, I just, I had a guy, a friend recently being like, like, are you sure you're doing enough with your YouTube channel? <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, like, I don't know. And like, but he wasn't specific at all. Mm. And, he, and he just kind of, it was like, it was like goodwill hunting. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. And then like, I, by the end of it, I think he expected me to just be crying in his arms. No, he, go, he goes, yeah, are you, are you sure you're doing enough with it? I'm sitting there going, I don't know if I'm doing enough with my YouTube channel. And then I got friends pressing me about this Logan Paul stuff. So the 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 first part of that conversation is, you know, what a piece of crap. He's a piece of crap. Can't believe he did that piece of crap. The second part is, did you hear how much money he makes? And they go, oh my God, his vlog channel, his vlog channel. And then I got all my wife's friends who we were hanging out with on the weekend going, why don't you have a vlog channel? Oh God, you don't want to do that. Why don't you do have that? a vlog channel? And then my wife's going, why don't you have a vlog channel? How much does he, how much money does he make? And they look it up. Oh my God. And they're bringing up like Logan Paul videos and like Jenna Marbles. And they're like, how much money do you think she made off that video? And I'm going, uh, da, da. oh, I think she made like 25 G's off that video. Oh my God. Why aren't you Jenna Marbles? Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, um, there will never be a hockey Jenna Marbles. It's <laughs> not going to work. Two things. That's like looking at an actor and be like, hey, why aren't you Tom Cruise? That's yeah. ridiculous. Also, this Steve is my favorite Steve. Ranty, upset, I'm fired up Steve is <laughs> yeah. awesome. And it's been a long time since we got this Steve. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> That's concerning to me. That doesn't make me feel good. That makes me feel horrible. What do you mean? It's been a while since you've gotten the Steve you enjoy. Steve. Like, what? Yes. I am just wondering... Why you don't have better thumbnails on your YouTube channel? Yeah, that's the, the thumbnails on that podcast channel. I don't know how to Photoshop. Channel. So now I got to learn how to The Photoshop. thumbnails yeah. on the podcast channel, I have to say, whoever does them does a great job. He does. They're actually, I don't know that it's a he. They're, qu they're quite lit. It could be. It could be an it. It could be. Could be. Yes. It could be. They are quite lit. Mm -hmm. I need to learn Photoshop now. Like there, there's I, so much stuff. Like I just realized. Like I think I'm behind. I don't know. Yeah. What happened? Life passed you by. I, Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like a guy like Philip DeFranco, for example, like I, I just look at and I go, like I want to do all the stuff he does, but like that guy has a staff. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yeah. well, I would really enjoy the thing having is, a staff. The thing <laughs> is, you've never reached out and tried to do that. Yeah. Well, have a staff? You have a staff here? We're a staff. I don't, what's, you guys have jobs. 
jobs. Like, I'm not going to be like, can you make but me no, a this thumbnail? Is also, or, <laughs> yeah, like, this is I have two job. equal jobs. Like, this job and my other you job. You realize this is, a, I mean, this is our business together, the three of us. Yeah. No, I, I know that. <laughs> oh, my existential crisis has nothing to do with this channel. No, no, I, I'm but, happy with this but, channel. But I get that. I get that. My point in saying that is that here, you have help. Yeah. With your channel, which is by far the more popular channel, you don't have any help. This and is, you've never, you've never thought. Well, you know what? I could farm some of this out, Adam. Listen, and, I'm, and I'm not getting, talking about I'm content. getting back to my Italian roots, which is bottle it up, <laughs> bottle it up, bottle it up, and then when it gets to the point where you can't handle it anymore, you explode it with anger and you talk it with your hands and your hairy knuckles and all this crap. I have all those things. Don't you dare yell, yell at me. Put a, put a letter out there. Someone's gonna put a letter. How much spaghetti sauce do you throw at the wall? <laughs> That's a wrong stereotype because you don't waste the sauce. Oh, okay. How could you? That's okay. right. How could you, Jesse? Yeah. No, yeah. you just cook your pain away. Just stir the pot until you're happy yeah. again. That's why the food's so good. We're yeah. anxiety stirring the sauce. Okay. And, and oh, cooking. what is this made with love? No, it's made with pain. <laughs> and that is why it tastes so good. It's made with love and pain. And pain is love. I, That's how it goes, one right? One day, you should bring in a plate of juicy meatballs. I'd love that. <laughs> I make good meatballs. I, you? <laughs> Ask Mrs. Dangle. W is water wet? Like, <laughs> You're Italian. You just you assume? I didn't have to assume. Token for the last time, you can play bass. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's me. I just thought you had a bass in your basement. <laughs> I'm sorry. Steve, It's weird I did have a bass in my basement. I don't know. I can dunk a basketball. <laughs> Steve, like, for the last time, you are six foot, seven foot, eight foot. Yeah. I own sweater vests. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go home and make a calzone. I've never tried, but I bet I can do it. Oh, one try. Yeah. Mm. Do you know that I can make mayonnaise? I'm a wasp who can make mayonnaise. <laughs> that Just throwing that out there. I hate that stereotype because I don't like mayonnaise. Well, you're wrong. Mayonnaise is amazing. No, no but you're Italian, so I'm yeah. like, you get a pass. I don't know. I think. I don't know. Hey. Oh. We back, started, we've gotten away. Back yeah. to the point here is I think maybe one day what you might want to look at is help. Part-time help. Dude, I can't afford to hire somebody. Part-time you can. How much should I pay this person? I, well, we don't need to talk about it on the air, but I'm sure that you can have somebody take some of the menial tasks, the tasks that you are yourself going, okay, I'm wasting a lot of time on this, and it's not benefiting me. What I should be focused on is the content of my channel, the uploading, the graphics, the stuff like that. There are people out there who freelance. Mm -hmm. See, now we're getting into the trust issues. I like doing all these things myself. Who did this? Oh, I did. Ah, but you you know what you need to learn yeah. is to delegate, my friend. And you know what? Nobody cares who did it when the end product is all you. Yeah. Like, at the end, If you're the just talent, be, you're the talent. Oh, yeah. I'm not trying to hog the glory. It's that I... I did the graphics. I did the, <laughs> Look at this bomb-ass thumbnail I made. Me. I did that. No, that's no. not what I'm looking for. What I... What I, 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 I I'm... If a mistake is made... I like it to have been my mistake. Does that make sense? Well, you're going to have to get over that at some point. I know. If mistakes are made on this channel yeah. that are Jesse and my mistakes. And guess what? More mine. I make mistakes you're... all the time. I do too. <laughs> I fuck up stats all the time. And how do I handle it? Uh, you scold me for weeks. That's yeah. Not true. See? That's yeah. not true at all. No, that's, that's fact. How dare you? He throws <laughs> pasta sauce against the wall. That's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> I have this gigantic pasta sauce beside me because, <laughs> and I just fall over like the office. <laughs> Jesse's on the phone like Steve. You didn't throw the pasta sauce again, did you? Uh, <laughs> you just hear Mrs. Dangle in the background. Well, just paint the walls red. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think you got to look at potentially, potentially, eliciting some help, and it's just a little bit at first. Give up a little bit With of control. What? And you give directions, and, and if you're paying somebody to do it, then they will do what you want. With what? Okay, I got a, I made a video yesterday on Cody Franzen. How could I have done that differently? Well, I, again, that's something that you maybe isn't the best podcast topic, but it's something we can talk about. Why not? About. We're so, working it out. But that's something you should know. Like, you know all the steps it took to make the video. What about those steps what could you source out? Tell me, well, how, it, tell me how it makes sense that. that you would learn Photoshop. 
Tell me how that's worth your time rather than researching a trade tree or coming up with a video or coming up with prep for this podcast. Tell me how, how that would be a better use of your time than deepening your knowledge of hockey or shooting another video. Well, now we get into the small business owners thing where really I'm going to spend money on someone photoshopping a thumbnail for my video. Yeah. Is that worth the investment? Is it worth the time not to? I don't know. Think about it. So I'm going to think about I think, what's wrong I with my thumbnails. You know now I'm feeling insecure about my thumbnails. If you I, own, I felt fine about those a few minutes ago. It was other stuff. If you own a small business and you listen to this show, and I know there are many, there are many, 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 tweet us, tell us what you think. I would be interested to hear. And you, don't even, you know what? You don't even have to own a small business. If there's a small business in your family, you let us know. Tell us, tell us, and, and if you can, try to prove to Steve that it's, it's okay to ask and pay for a little bit of help. I'm just saying. Just saying. I want a Bugatti. Well, okay. Well, that's pushing it. If you want a Bugatti, then you're going to have to start a vlog channel and be like Logan Let's Paul. See, I don't, <laughs> I don't even think Steve's LFRs are a small business. I think it's just a little hobby that's not going anywhere. You know? Oh, just doing oh, it for now. See this guy? He's, right. He's just doing it for now. And He's right. probably end soon. Then you have to get a real job. Probably that's go back to the zoo. All the you big know? YouTubers screw it up for the little guy like me. Where mm-hmm. I thought it was big time. Nope. Uh, all these big YouTubers, they screw it up because, you, you know what some people just ask, like, bold fla- uh, boldface? They'll be like, hey, you're Steve Daniel. I'll go, hey, nice to meet you. First question, how much money you make? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. That happened the other day. How much money you make? And I go, okay. You know how you read an article where PewDiePie makes $7 million? No. <laughs> not me. Oshawa. No, that's not how that works. Yeah. But it's the same thing as my actor analogy before. Yeah. Not, if you're an actor, it doesn't mean you're Tom Cruise making $10 million a year. You know what my favorite answer to that question is? More than you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that rude, would be wrong. Because yeah. it's a rude fucking question. Yeah. It is a rude question. Yeah, but I, also, so I always I just say more than you just so they go, what? More I'm than a- you. And then when they leave, the answer is less. Because so now what? they don't watch it anymore because they think I'm a jerk off. Meet them, meet them halfway with the stupidity of the question and give them a stupid no, answer. Anybody who's asking you how much you make, you definitely make more than them. Because they <laughs> five are million child. dollars. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's dumb. Yeah. That's a dumb question to ask. Don't ask I that. make five m- million bitcoins. <laughs> That'd how be much a is lot that? of bitcoins. That's a lot of that's bitcoins. That's like a trillion dollars. Somehow wow. you've activated my Siri, too, and she's... Uh... Hey, Siri. Siri, how much money oh does Steve God. Dangle make? You know what's amazing? What? Whenever you say, okay, Google... And somebody has their okay Google around. I hope I just set one off. Oh, you definitely did. <laughs> Alexa, look up Steve Dangle's nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, how did my phone do that? It, it responded to Alexa. Hey, Google, pause my podcast. Oh, <laughs> you're a awesome. dick. <laughs> Somebody's driving and oh, they have a po- Hey. Well, no, no, the podcast is so oh, oh. Should we maybe delete that? No, 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 I think it'll be funny. All right, do a Siri one. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, did it not, to you guys, feel like we watched the same game two days in a row, just inverse, or, or I guess backwards? The Leafs this steal goes, one in the third, Columbus steals one in the third against the Leafs. This goes back to the money thing. I would just like to thank Justin Fisher for wasting $90 of mine because he contacted me at 4.30 uh, yesterday <laughs> afternoon and he goes, you want to go to the game? 90 bucks, sitting in the nosebleeds. Nice. They freaking lose in overtime. It sure, I was thinking about, I think it was, it was seven minutes left in the game and I'm like, man, they just look mature. Like they're going to lock this down. Last year they'd have given this it up. It didn't feel for a second like they were going to blow it. That was one of their best games of the season. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, they got, they got. Uh, I want to say it was the end of the first. Uh, Columbus really started to run up the shot clock, maybe even beginning of the second. The Leafs got into a little bit of penalty trouble. This, the back half of the second period is one of the best 10-minute stretches they've had. So good. And then I think uh, Columbus's first shot in the third didn't come until like eight or nine minutes in. How did they blow that game? How? Don't know. But then it's, it's interesting. I was so mad about the loss that I didn't even think about the Canucks game until well after the video was uploaded. I, you can't look at that as breaking even, can you? Can you? Why not? You're right. I mean, it's, it, it's, it basically it's the is same breaking game. even. Yeah, without the shootout but in the second game. But they could have had both. Mm-hmm. Why not have both? Why not both? Oh, listen, I'm not happy about it. And it was like, 
it was one of those infuriating, infuriating situations, and I I rarely get like this with the Leafs lately. But you know when you're when you're really frustrated with a video game, and it feels like for a second you're like, I'm going to throw this controller <laughs> through my my screen, and it's going to feel really good. And then you stop yourself and go, that would have really sucked because then I would have had to replace my TV. So what was frustrating? I think it was, there was a couple things. I find, I mean, that first goal on Freddie Anderson against, with, with, in the Columbus game, that is, that's what we're talking about now. Yeah. Fluke happens. Happens. Really the exact same way. Happens, happens, happens. Uh, the second goal was a, uh, Morgan Riley tried to make a pass along a board three okay. lines deep. He was at his hash marks and tried to hit William Nylander on no, the opposing Marlo. blue line. Oh, it was Marlowe. Marlo. Marlo. So, about that. So, Riley should have never made that pass. No, it was, no. It was weird that he didn't know not to do it. Did Marlowe call for it? Because if he did, what have you been doing the past 19 years, Patrick? <laughs> Yeah, he was stationary what, at the line. Yeah, so what he made you the, think that was the play? But yeah. if he did receive it and he's stationary, then he's got to get going again too, which is also kind of problematic because you want a guy, you want to catch a guy in motion, you want to yeah. catch him flat footed. And it, like, I don't want to just stick up for Riley no matter what. He had a bad game. He did. Well, uh, no, or end, it was end just, of game. He had yes, a, a terrible end of game. But if if okay, if you're Morgan Riley, like no Leafs defenseman is so good and so tenured that if Patrick Marlowe calls for a pass, they can look him off <laughs> and not do it. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you're but staring you know, at the ice and you go, Patrick Marlowe's asking for the puck right now. Unless you're, unless you're Hainsey. Or if you're, you're like, oh, I'm your dad. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Morgan Riley's almost at 400 NHL games. Are I you know. telling me that he... It's crazy. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. He sh- he is the one with the puck. Is dumb. He is the one who makes those Shouldn't decisions. Yep. If Patrick Marlowe calls for a pass... Who cares what number or name is on the back of his yeah. jersey? If it's a bad pass, it's a bad pass, it's a bad um, pass. No, I was right. I wonder... I don't know, because Babcock was weirdly cool after the game. And I wonder if it's because he knows those are two of his soldiers and he didn't want to whip them too hard. Well, I think he knew that they or, played a good game. And I, I think, you know, you do lose you do lose games like that throughout the year. That does oh, happen. And it sucks, but it happens. That's right? really I mean, the Leafs' first one. Yeah, where you have it, like, stolen from out under you. Yeah, it, it happens. So, I mean, I wouldn't be... If it was a, if it was a, a habit of theirs, um, then I would understand. But I, fi- I feel like in this particular situation, this loss was... It was it just sh- sometimes shit happens, man. And I, I, I the, the the thing that bothered me a little bit in overtime was first off, Morgan Riley gets lit up without the puck behind the play, loses his like glove and his helmet. No call. That's just, well, you thought that was an yeah, accident, I right? Thought th- I think they just bumped into each was other. Was that an and accident? Then Riley just got the bad end of it. Fair enough. It was annoying to me because I look at that and I look at the play between Connor Brown and Nathan McKinnon, and I go, "What's really the difference here?" Mm. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. But we thought that was a shaky call. So what, are we mad that they didn't make another shaky call? I don't know. I was a little bit more upset at the line change. Well, and like, that's that was the next thing. So, Jesse, you you, felt, you shot this up. The first thing I saw, and we'll get to the, the line change itself, but the first thing I saw was that 2-1-1 developing and William Nylander holding up and not swiveling his head to check. And he gave up his man. He gave up his man. But there shouldn't have been anyone there. Is the th- you're right though. The fact that someone was there, you got a shoulder doesn't check. matter. Who cares? Who cares that check. there should have been a call? I know if I'm the only what- driver on this road. You got a shoulder check. Yeah, and that's that's the problem. Is that you? That is that's. I mean, and he slowed down. He slowed down. He gave up. Okay, uh, there was a moment on the Leafs power play last night where Matthews was going for the puck at the speed of smell, and you're like, he's going to speed up any moment now. And then he didn't, and one of the Blue Jackets, I don't remember who it was, got the puck, took a shot, and it hit the post. Short-handed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What the hell was that? And that's the second time he's done that in I, the last two or three games, where he's been, like, slowly cross-country skiing along the ice. Is he hurt? Like, what? Might be. Might be. He didn't look himself last night. That was weird. And yeah. what's weird is Hyman and Nylander were going. It's... It's the first time I can think of where Matthews looked like the least effective part of his line, and he still made a highlight reel play. Oh yeah, you see that crazy play where he has a puck under his skate. um, Yeah. Do you care that Leo only played forty three seconds less than him? Yeah, that's really starting to piss me off because 
<laughs> fans put their energy in the wrong place often, and I'm guilty of that. Why is everyone so mad at Komarov? It's you should be praising him. It's insane that he is sort of keeping afloat, being given at least five minutes more a game than he should be getting. It's absolutely ridiculous. And what is he doing other than everything he's being asked to do? The guy's a winger. He's taking face-offs. He's on the penalty kill. He's on the power play. He's at five on five. He People got mad about Zach Hyman being on the first line. Zach Hyman's not on the Leafs' first line. Leo Komarov is. Because the Leafs' first line is Komarov, Kadri, Marlowe. It starts every game. It's on the ice at the end of every game. It's uh, special teams. It's, uh, yeah, penalty kill. Three on three. Three on three? (laughs) Is he (laughs) mental? He started overtime with Leo Komarov. Guys, but he's been doing that all year. Every overtime he does it. And that's what I don't but understand. I don't it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I'll tell you I'll, I'll tell you what I think the thinking is, and then I'll tell you why it doesn't make sense. And this is what I've, I've tried to figure this out. Because from what I understand, most teams start their top line, three on three, right? That, that sort of makes sense. I don't know that Mike Babcock trusts it's either Austin Matthews or William Nylander or both of them to handle another team's top line. The problem becomes when you put Kadri and Komarov off there and let's say they get through that first shift and usually they do. Mm-hmm. Usually <laughs> nobody scores. The problem is when you make a change, chances are you're not the one with the puck. Chances are you've dumped it into their zone and what the teams are doing and what they did so beautifully last night is they just play kept away. They kept it away. They keep it they keep the puck out of Nylander and Matthews uh, sticks because Columbus because, literally play kept uh, yeah, play yeah. and, they, and you know it was, it was just disgraceful. Just Vancouver, Vancouver did Shadow the Shadow same Shadow thing. Shadow. Yeah. Vancouver did the exact same thing. But the, the other, and this is this is you know where my complete lack of on ice hockey knowledge comes into play. So Columbus had that that disgraceful shift where they were just circling mm-hmm. the puck around, circling the puck around, and then Nylander and Matthews went off, and I'm like, why are you going off right now? I know you've been on for a while, but what are you tired? Yeah, <laughs> like, well, yeah, you've been standing there. No, they've they been on the ice. They've been barely. They were barely floating around. Mm. I don't know. I thought they could have stayed out there for a long shift. And you never know. Babcock might be calling for the change. It might no, not no. Be up to well, them. no. That's sorry. That and I, at, see what I just did. Mm. I blamed Matthews for the coach's decision. Yeah. So so it, it's for easy that, to do that change. You're Leave them on. Yeah. Leave them on. It's not, not there. So here's here's. Here's my problem, too, with Leo. And it's and not if, Leo if himself. If anyone picks on you, Mike, I'll defend you for leaving them on in that case. Leo being on in the power play makes no sense to me. And, I, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I I'll, get it. I'll tell you why. Wrong. How yeah. does a team with Matthews, Nylander, Marner, Marlowe, JVR, Bozak? You didn't even mention Kadri. Didn't even mention Kadri. How, do, how does Leo Komarov make it on? And more to my point, Nikita Zaitsev has as many points as Leo Komarov has this year. Nikita Zaitsev has only played 34 games. Leo Komarov has played 44. And I'm not saying that that's Leo Komarov's fault. But what I don't understand is how a guy with four goals, six assists, 10 points in 44 games is on your second, because I guess their top power play line is the Marner, Bozak, JVR line. Yeah, Marner, Bozak, JVR, Kadri, and I don't remember who the defender is. I assume it's either Riley or Gardner. Yeah, I think it's... How is it possible... How is it possible that Such a good Ron Hainsey, who has more points than Leo Komarov, isn't then power, playing power play? Like they're because he's playing too much on the it's penalty. Very clear. He's already playing too much. It's very clear he's that he's not effective in that role. Well, and okay, let's and he let's is go effective on to in certain roles. Bigger thing. Let's. This is this attaches to an even bigger thing because fans have been talking about should the Leafs make a move for this guy. Should they, should they get Cody Franson? Should it be Chris Tanev? Should it be Ian Cole? Should it be, should it be, should it be? I'll, I'll be comfortable with the Leafs making a move when they use the freaking team that they currently have properly. And they're not! Zaitsev's out. So what? It's like Sakara being up for the Oilers. That shouldn't sink your whole freaking team. Shouldn't send everything into disarray because you're missing one guy. Oh, you're, you're missing your team star. Okay, that hurts. That and he's hurts. not. And Zaitsev is not. Exactly. You lose Matthews for several months. Yeah, that may cause your playoff hopes to sink or swim. That may be the difference. Zaitsev? No. No! I I don't understand it, and it's driving me nuts. Now, Leo, his role on the power play is to be be (laughs) replacement JVR, I guess, because they don't really have... Like, who could... But it's not working. In in an ideal world, who... 
could be secondary unit JVR. Better question, why is that the secondary unit? Matthews, Nylander, who else? Mm-hmm. Well, Komarov. We didn't even mention Connor Brown, by the way. Marlowe. Who was amazing last game. And on, the, and on the fourth line to start. Yeah. And let's not even forget that Josh Levo isn't playing. It, you it know would be great. You know what, Saul's? You know what? Josh Levo would be a good power play net front presence. He's big enough for it. Um, and he's got a great shot. What would uh, help some of the Leo Komarov problem? Put Connor Brown on that line. Put Connor Brown on that line. And then, you know what the Leafs did really well against the Blue Jackets? Um, was they bullied them. They pushed them around. And they've been doing that the last couple games. Like, they've been... Like the Leafs are known as like a like a speedy, fast, small-ish finesse team, but like they got some jerks. Mm-hmm. Like they they're, they they won't be bullied. Um, and he, even some of the smaller guys, Zaitsev, when he's healthy, is a jerk. Connor Carrick, when he's actually in the lineup, is small but a jerk. Uh, you can't really push them around. Um, imagine a fourth line of Martin, Goat, and Komarov. I don't hate that. I don't hate that at all. I don't hate that at all. And and it allows Leo Komarov to be fresh for the things that you need him to be fresh for. Namely, and, penalty kill. And it allows you to utilize two offensive players. With Kadri. Yeah. Kadri and Marlowe and Leo. And you know what's great about Marlowe and Connor Brown is they're both defensively responsible. Like, Along with Kadri. So if you want that line to play that role, if you want to shut down, you want to put that line out against Connor McDavid and whoever's playing on his wings, it's not like... It's not like... Um, Connor Brown is going to put you at a, a, a severe disadvantage or something like that. It's not like he's got glaring weaknesses in his game where you'd be like, oh man, no, we can't play him again. He's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I feel like uh, he's wasted on the fourth line. It makes the fourth line really good. Like you, but could, you don't need the fourth line to be really good. Yeah. Well, you do, but it's like if you're going to have Matt Martin out there, no offense again to Matt Martin, but the fact is the, the team optimized is insert centerman here. Is it Goche or is it Dominic Moore? I think it's Goche. Josh Levo and Leo Komarov on that bottom line. What they have right now, I think, are four well-rounded lines. What I think just swapping Komarov and Brown would do is giving you three really good lines and a competent fourth. Isn't that the who best? Who doesn't you want can, that? Yeah. Who doesn't want that? And who wants to play against that fourth line? You got a player you trust in Komarov who will beat you up. You got Gauthier, who is the size of a truck bus, <laughs> and Big you boy. got Matt Martin, who is, I think, honestly, he's having a banger of a season. He I, is. I, I like he it. He is. I, I like watching him play. It's. I'm not sorry again. I'm not trying to take away from his play. He's played well. I think he'll right. have a good coaching career one day, because there are so many times where he's in a situation that I go, oh, man, if, <laughs> if only he had, like, there's no way to say this without sounding condescending, but boy, like, the skill just isn't there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But he's often in the right position, mm-hmm. and he's often got the right idea. And you see him with the he puck, and the game. he goes, "Yeah, he goes, man. If only I were like, if I were Mitch Marner, I know what I would do right now." <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not him, so uh, dump it into the corner. Yeah, um, it's. I just want the Leafs to be the Leafs. I feel like I've been saying this all season long. And I'm not talking about win every game friggin' 8-5 against the Rangers. We keep going back to that game. I'm I'm just talking about... Optimize them. Yes. Well, and then here's the thing. Yes. So last last night we we see Travis Dermott, actually for the last two games, play quite well. Today in morning rushes, Travis Dermott's in the scratch position. Yeah, Babcock saying, well, it's, you know, it's just rotation. Like, <laughs> blow it out your rear, Mike. Like, you're You're lying. You're lying. Roman Polak has taken 10 minor penalties in the last 10 games. He's taken penalties in 8 of the last 10 games. And I think he's, he's taken double it, minors twice. That's, that's good for fantasy hockey. So. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Mike, is a, like, think... Mike has a pool on Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I'm, I'm third place, but friggin' uh, Dubas and uh, Brandon Pridham are ahead of me. Mm-hmm. You know, those uh, nerds with their spreadsheets. That's the only reason they're winning, but I'm going to show them hockey sense wins, and I'm going to win that pool. Uh, so that? it's a positive step. Polak, what Absolutely. was this, the tweet I sent you guys last night? Polak had put himself down, put the Leafs oh. down three times, no, twice or three yeah. times in the last 10 days, five on three. Yeah, so yeah, the Leafs were a, a man penalty. down, and while they were a man down, he was on the penalty kill and put them down five on three, three times in a 10-day span. Jonas Siegel did an article on it in The Athletic, and... 
talked to Roman Polak about why he thinks he's taking penalties. And Roman Polak basically said, well, these weren't penalties before, and now they are. Yeah, so about that, Roman, shut up. <laughs> That's wrong. Huh? He's wrong. Hitting guys from behind tends to be a penalty no matter when, no matter what know. era. Have you seen the 80s? Oh, the, okay, yeah. you're right, the 80s, you're right. Let's, I'm trying yeah. to bring it up, but uh, Apple broke my phone intentionally. Do you want me to bring and it? I hate them for it. What are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for a tweet from, no, I'm determined to do this. Uh, Ian Tullock. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's Who's a guy? Had, yeah, he's a guy. He, uh, I forget who he writes for. I want to say Leafs Nation. But um, here we go. Ian, Ian, Ian. He had a tweet about Roman Polak and his penalty differential. And yada, yada, yada. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Good. Roman Polak's penalty differential was well below replacement level last year, costing his team a lot of goals. So it looked like... It, so it says pen G-A-R-O. Uh, penalty games above. above replacement. Whatever. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Roman Polak was the third worst player in the league last year in terms of penalty differential. Wow. Uh, the, the Who were the two worst? Glad you asked. Nikita Tom Tram- Wilson. <laughs> Nikita Trampkin was the worst. Tom Wilson? And... That's my guess. Dion Phaneuf. Oh, no. That doesn't shock me at all because he was... <laughs> He drew a lot of penalties when he was with the Leafs, but wow, did he take so many. Yeah. He yeah. took so many. Other other names on this list, I don't think this is this year. I think this is last year. Uh, Andre Schuster, Brandon Carlo, Joel Edmondson. Yeah, that's a bit surprising. Mark Borowicki, Luke Witkowski, Eric Griba. You want to be on the same list as Eric Griba? You want to be below Eric Griba in anything? Jakob Kindle. Like, and if that's last year, what's he better? Those weren't penalties before, though. They are now! They uh, are now! You know what you're competing for? The 2018 Stanley Cup! Adapt or get out! I have a... Roman, get a laugh, Mike! <laughs> I have a theory. You know what I'm saying? Yes, what? I have a Mindhunter Holden Ford theory for you. Oh, oh Jesus. Dick <laughs> Fincher. Um, what if... This is all a pump and dump for Leo Komarov. No, I don't think that exists. <laughs> I think I don't think that is playing Leo because Lou told him to because they want to trade him at the deadline. No so way. So they're showing that Komarov can play all these minutes. Pump and dump? So they can trade him. Pump and dump. I don't dump. believe that pump for and one dump second. Leo. I don't believe that, that, that exists. Pump and dump Leo. I don't think that exists. It's, it's happening, and we're witnessing it. And we're in the middle. We're in the eye of the hurricane. We don't even know it. If they do want to make the pump and if they, if they want to make their up, their upgrade at defense, Leo or JVR are the guys that are that you that you can trade. You gotta you gotta play Komarov to prove that he can play. Well, there was the Darren Dreger report that uh, apparently JVR would take six times six. I don't want that. I want to give that to Marner. <sighs> See, I think you could do both. I think you can. No, it doesn't. But why? When you have replacements for JVR, you do have you do. Right Why now, the secondary that? playoff unit is is Komarov. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be that way. And no, should never have been <laughs> that way. <laughs> you know who got Are they it? hoping that he gets back to 19 goals? Like, what? It, what is the point? Yeah. You know who I really want to see get a shot is um, I want to see Andreas Johnson up with the Leafs at some point this season and playing. I don't think he's going to get that chance because what, what are you going to do? I like, think call him up ahead of Kapanen. I think put him in ahead of Levo. <laughs> I think or who else is hurt? Andreas Johnson and Carl Grundstrom will be, I think, big parts of this team next year. That's uh, what I think. Uh, from Alex Sixero, brother of Sid. Uh, Alex fan 590. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Lou Lamorello on Travis Dermott. We have seven defensemen here right now. We'll take this a game at a time. Our coaching staff will make the decision on who plays, but he has a bright future. And there was, uh, there was another quote, and I don't know where it went, but basically he said he played fantastic. But so it sounds like Lou really likes this guy. I feel like there was a Babcock quote, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, in an ideal world, he would have been with the team the yeah, whole year. Yeah, there was something about if you were a right-handed shot, he'd been with the team the whole year. Something's up. So if that's, the, if, that's the, if that's what they're saying, if how bad is it if a player's on their left side? You're already playing Hainsey on his wrong side. Well, supposedly Dermot regularly plays on the right. Did in Erie, for sure. So my that's my question is, is, it, is okay, ideally you have three left, three right, right? And then a couple in reserve. 
But you don't have that. It didn't bother so, Babcock at the World Cup. So Wasn't why that a big thing? Why would you not have the best player in the lineup? And he's very Travis Dermott, at least through the first two games, belongs. Seeing him live was really fun. Really fun. That one why did he only get a 10 second shift in overtime? I know you want to use Riley as much as you can, but <laughs> let him fly. It was so obvious the second he took off that the Columbus player was like, I don't have that. I do not have that. And Dermott, in his second NHL game, his first NHL overtime, well, I guess, well, first NHL overtime that he played in, mm-hmm. had the confidence to be like, I'm going to dust this guy. <laughs> and he did. And then went straight to the bench. Maybe that's why he got benched. Maybe you're supposed to be slow like Polak. I maybe heavy. That's maybe heavy. That's I don't heavy. understand the Polak justification. <laughs> so, I don't give a damn if he got an assist. So I was listening to um, I, I was listening to a clip with uh, JD Bunkus. Who, if you don't know JD Bunkus yet, you he's need a to listen. Stallion. He's awesome. He's on. Uh, he's on with uh, Ben Ennis every afternoon, and and those two guys, it, the good show on Sportsnet. And uh, honestly, uh, he's a that's that that kid's a star. Oh, Duracell bunny. Um, and what he was talking to Justin Bourne from the Athletic about. And by the way, is Justin coming on today? He hasn't gotten back to me. Okay. I, don't, I don't think Text he me. can. Justin, Justin was potentially going to come on. Uh, if not, we'll have him on next episode. But the, I, I, I asked Justin about the Roman Polak thing because I, I heard him on with J.D. Bunkus, and what, what essentially was a, initially said is Justin pointed out that Babcock punishes veterans differently than he punishes rookies. So veterans are given like, oh, you did that wrong, but you know, you'll, you'll be fine again next game. Rookies, you're demoted to the fourth line or you're not playing. And so what I asked him was, um, when you look at what Roman Polak has has caused, say, in the last 10 games. So the Roman Polak, uh, Roman Polak has taken a penalty to put his team down five on three, three times in the past 10 days. Not 10 games, 10 days. We did that? Uh, at We See What Happened. Uh, and it continues to be played every single night, no questions asked. So I asked Justin about that, and I said, what is this? And he said, well, I just think they feel the group lacks snarl without him. They know they need to upgrade, but Babs thinks Carrick is too small, wants a little more edge oh back there. God. For what it's worth, I don't think he's a regular come playoffs. They have to do something. And then, of course, you know, we had to bring up the whole thing in, in Vancouver, which was good brands in the Leafs. And I know, I'm not sure where that rumor came from, but there was uh, a Vancouver. The province. So the province. I think. Now, was that from them or was that someone that they... I read jumped on the, the back of yeah. I read in the province. So he said, uh, I asked about Good Branson, and he said, "Are those rumors?" I uh, he said, I, "I know nothing about that. He might be worse than Polak. I doubt something like that would actually happen." I, I, no, I don't think they make that move. I think uh, it's funny. Like when you hear rum- rumors, we rarely think of the context of when the rumor is from. Like if the Leafs don't know if Polak's coming back in the summer, I suppose that trade might make. Some sense, a little bit, right now. Yeah, I don't really understand that. I don't really understand the need. Um, could is he is he worse than Polak? Boy, then he's then. Well, it's come not, on. But and that's that's what I keep going back to is if you're gonna make an upgrade, don't upgrade the bottom two. You don't need that. Yeah, we're you don't sti- need we're that. sticking duct tape on the on yeah. the bottom of a if boat if, here. If, if defense <laughs> is what you're going to upgrade, you better go top four because whoever has to come down <laughs> will complete your bottom two. Like that's and, and that's just the the long and the short of it. Don't acquire. Don't Dude. don't be like Mark Bergevin going in the playoffs last year, acquiring what is it, Dwight Dwight King and oh my god, um, Alec Martin Martinez Martinez uh, um, uh, Alec Martinek or whatever. No, it wasn't Martinek. Andreas Martinson. Uh, Andreas Martinson. You're thinking of, uh, yeah, you're confusing. I'm confusing names. names. Yeah, Martin. Andreas Martinson, uh, and then like a couple of, like they just got a bunch of spare parts for no reason. Don't do that. This is, you're going to make a move, make the move, right? Here, fully healthy, okay? Riley Hainsey, Gardner Zaitsev, Borgman Dermott, Carrick. Great. Laughing. Didn't even make a move. There Why you go. won't they do that? Well, when Who, Zaitsev's got to get Who's killing penalties for you? Riley Hainsey, Zaitsev. Mm-hmm. You had Borgman killing for a while. Mm-hmm. Gardner can kill. If you're not as confident in those guys, put them on your second unit. I don't know why you'd be confident in Polak killing penalties after the stat I just read about. Guy can't putting, move. No, he can't. Guy can't and it's move. not like he's enormously tall and has a, a, a huge range with his stick either. 
So anyway, he's a hardworking guy. Um, I think they like the so example am I. he sets for the team. Yes, hockey culture needs to stop falling in love with guys just because they work hard. You got to be a good player. He's not. He's not a good NHL player. He's just not. I know, See, I know we're picking I don't up. think you have a stat for how hard working he is, though. <laughs> like, what if his bad play is balanced out by the amount of times he outworks somebody on the ice? There you go. <laughs> you don't. Jesse just got I, it. Jesse got it. I don't think you're looking at it the right way. We are getting caught up in something, though. So Babcock punishes rookies different, blah, 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 blah. So why is Austin Matthews being punished? What do you mean? Well, he must be being punished. Why isn't he playing him? That, that is interesting. I, I wonder if there is, is an Neil injury. Being punished? There might be an injury we don't know about. Hyman being punished? Are they hurt? I don't know. Don't just stop playing the line because one one of them's a little banged up. Switch it up. You love doing that, Mike. Zach Hyman is magically a center on the penalty kill. Make him a center a couple <laughs> shifts. Why not? Why not? Mid-play. Who cares? Nothing matters anymore. Like, this is... The Leafs are good. Here they are. Here they are. People ask me for a long time, what are you going to do? What are your, what are your videos going to be like? What's the podcast going to be like once the Leafs are finally good? The same! <laughs> the exact same! They're always going to drive me nuts until they hoist the cup above their head and then we'll nickel and dime them about like how they look the Can't do it the again cup. the next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's always going to be. <laughs> so, Steve, what's your plan? Misery! Always! Monday, this and was misery, also, this Tuesday. This is also game 44, and they're seven points clear of a playoff spot, and they got one point, and they mm-hmm. just came off stealing a game. It's also not Against a game Vancouver, of... Vancouver, man. It's like, also not a game of consequence in the large scheme of things. It's the mi- literally the middle of the season, and they got a point. If and they, they got get, three points when they should have probably only had two. They should have got four. They should have probably, probably only, only had two. Got two. And they, they got out three. Against Vancouver. <laughs> and it's, why they shouldn't have been is what I'm saying. They're gonna play Boston in the first round of the playoffs, and then that's when it'll be the actual test. And it's if, kind of just waiting out the last forty the games Boston's to playing, see how it geez. is. Uh, uh, waiting out the last forty games sounds like a hell of a strategy. You've never been in this position. What Steve? happens? I know you gotta wait out the last. 40 what games. happens now? <laughs> what happens? It's like the Raptors. The Raptors. Who gives a shit what the Raptors do in the regular season? The NBA season it really is funny, eh? Yeah. yeah. It's like the first three quarters of the game. And we're... <laughs> yeah. They literally don't matter. No. They don't matter. And we're, we're at that point where the Leafs are good enough where they're going to make the playoffs. Like, do you guys have any doubt that the Leafs will make the playoffs? Very little. There you go. Mm. So right now we're just kind of we're overanalyzing everything because we're, we're just kind of waiting. We're doing a little of the Mason Raymond Canucks thing. Yeah. But... Uh. But a there are, bit. I think a there very are some, light version of that. But there are problems. There are legitimate criticisms to be leveled. Yeah, and I think it's something. It's good that after tomorrow, this is this. They will have their bye week. They're six days yeah. off, and hopefully the coaching staff reevaluates. Mike, ba- I th- you know what I thought the most telling thing about the last week has been Mike. Somebody telling Mike Babcock that Leo Komarov played twenty four minutes, and him going, "No, that can't be right." I don't know. Sometimes you're too There's close. No way. There's Some, no way. Sometimes you're too close to the painting to see the entire picture, and you need to take a step back and go, "Okay, how did that happen?" The one that drove me what nuts am I today doing? was, uh, "Are you going to send Travis Dermott down during the bye week so he can play with the Marlies?" And he goes, "Well, we haven't thought about that." He's a liar. What? Steve. It's two days away. Steve, of He's course. A liar. See, there it is. <laughs> All season, I've been touting. You know what? You can listen to what Babcock says, uh, and, he, and he's honest. Wrong. No. Wrong. And it's difficult to admit you were wrong, but I was wrong. <laughs> He's a dirty liar. Jesse's gone. Of course they thought about that. They're yeah. one of the most calculated teams in the NHL. <laughs> He's a dirty liar. <laughs> it's Bab- not even Mike Babcock lying. is a dirty, dirty liar. He's just playing ignorant because yeah. he doesn't need to give you an answer. He doesn't need to answer Mike that. Babcock. Why would he answer that? Yeah. I, I hope the Leafs win the cup and he writes this big book friggin' going, I'm stupid like a fox. You, you think I played Leo freaking Kamara for 24 minutes? <laughs> Like by accident, we got we got Tavares for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait for that. <laughs> okay, step one: pump and dump Leo Komarov. Step two: call Garth Snow nonstop. <laughs> no, until call he picks Pete up the phone. Shirelli. Yeah, call Pete Shirelli. Step three: call Pete after. Hey, um, I want to read you guys a tweet that has nothing to do with the Leafs. Let's marvel in someone else's misery, shall we? Ooh, this is a tweet. Don't look at it. 
Don't look at it. I'm going to read it out to you. Here's the tweet. Brent Seabrook will likely be a healthy scratch tonight. Mm-hmm. Reminder, he is owed $41.25 million over the next six season, which averages out to $6.875 million. Never in a million years, like even with all the people going, um, that's a bad contract. Never in a million years did I think we would have Brent Seabrook in like the David Clarkson conversation. And also, Thomas Yorko is also scratched tonight. Which is interesting, too. I and mean, there are worse scratches. When your defense is that thin, you they wave, just got rid of <laughs> They yeah. just wave France in and send him to Rockport. Nobody put in a claim. And then they're going to and then they're gonna do Seabrook, too? That is telling. That is interesting. Well, maybe it's along the lines of what Jesse said. It's 40 games left. Who cares? Well, and Justin Bourne made a good, mis- uh, a good uh, point. It's like, well, you're in last place, and you've been playing poorly. Why not make a change? All you got to do is do this for one game. Like, I I bet you Brent Seabrook has a pretty good few games after the scratch whenever he is played. I, come on. Bro, watching, How can he not? Watching the Chicago media reaction to this season in general has been very interesting. It's been really fun watching <laughs> fan bases. Pittsburgh and Chicago have been great to watch for yeah, that. Not understand how to cope with being bad. Wait a second. I was going to be that bad eventually? Yeah. No way. It's No way. Well, and what what I think makes it better is while it's been forever since they've been bad, those fan bases remember being bad. Bad. Uh-huh. Like maybe there's like a younger generation that was like energized by like Crosby Malkin and all that and Kane and Taves and all that. But like people in like their mid 20s, they know. late 20s, they early know. 30s. Mi- Oh, they remember how they got those guys. Do you remember late 90s Wendell Clark and Doug Gilmore playing for Chicago? Because I do. Wendell Clark was a Chicago Blackhawk? For about three minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. I remember when he was on Tampa. That was weird, too. In those weird, like, friggin' Tesla Uh, coil jerseys. Two quotes on Seabrook. One's from Seabrook. He said, I've just got to be better. That's what he told Mark Lazarus. And then uh, Quenville says, I just felt, we felt. The other guys were deserving of playing tonight's game, and we think it's a, v- a very limited experience for him tonight. Exactly. So it's a one-game slap on the wrist. Mm-hmm. Stop playing like crap. Don't be as bad. Yeah, well, and last I checked in on the Blackhawks, was uh, Seabrook was on the ice with Keith. So how bad are things really? So my favorite part about this is when something like this is announced. Normally, you have a fan base going, oh, I knew this was coming, or oh, he's not very good, or oh. What I saw in replies to this was, please tell Peter Shirelli to throw his phone away. Dr- somebody drowned Peter Shirelli's phone. <laughs> Supposedly, Bob Stoffer was on the radio today. Was this what you were about to say? Yeah. yeah did you no, no, you please, please, yeah. please. Well, I, I forget the name who he wanted to offer up. Oh, hey, why don't the Oilers go out and... Offer Andre Sakara <laughs> for Brent Seabrook. <laughs> Let it ride. Here come the Oilers. Let's go. Stan Bowman be like, thank you for my next cup. Like, <laughs> not that Sakara is going to put you over the top, but at least it's, it's like that Trump that tweet. Just, stop saving the Blackhawks. It's like that viral Trump tweet that you could just so easily uh, uh, apply to Stan Bowman and the Chicago Blackhawks. Ha. Can't wait to see how the Blackhawks wriggle their way out of this mess. The Blackhawks wriggle their way out of it easily. Ah, well, nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> Every year, somebody save people them. line up to be like, I'm sorry, can I help you? <laughs> and then they do. It's probably going to happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, um, since we're on the subject of Winnipeg, not in Winnipeg, we're granting to Winnipeg. Now. No, the other cold we, yeah, Canadian we place. We're not talking about at all. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're not on the subject of Winnipeg, let's talk about Edmonton. Speaking of paninis. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been to a hoedown? Uh, no. Uh, according to John Shannon today, all appears to have settled down for the Oilers for the time being. At this point, no off-ice changes contemplated. And the top response is the, is the Simpsons gift. We've tried everything. We tried, we're all, no, we've tried nothing, and we're all out of ideas. Oh, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's even better. We've tried nothing, and we're all out of ideas. Dude, 
That team <laughs> is just... I tweeted today, I really want the Oilers to play the Penguins in the Stanley Cup final. Because that is just the heavyweight world championship of hot takes. Like, that is just... It, both markets are four lines deep. <laughs> matchup after matchup, that's a track meet. They're just they're just ex- exchanging blows. Donnie Brooken. I want Rob Rossi to cut a promo on Mark Spector. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Spector to, to respond. Bob Stoffer hits Mark Madden with a with a <laughs> steel chair. <laughs> that Dustin Nielsen guy just I don't know. He gets put in a sleeper just, hold by just, Dejan Kovacevic. Just and, being himself. Um, Who have I missed? So here's here's what's interesting. There was a, a several interviews done by Pete Chiarelli. Stop talking! <laughs> Stop! What Pete Chiarelli said was... Ryan's- you know who's been talking a lot recently? Mark Bergevin and Pete Chiarelli. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know who talked who? today and it made no headlines? Lou Lamarillo. No headlines. Mm-hmm. Shut up! Why won't you listen to me? Holy shit. Sorry, keep going. Ryan Strom hasn't performed as expected, is a quote from Pete Chiarelli. Now, at Woodguy55, who was... On fire, on fire with some of these Oilers tweets. Said he's, he's, he's a pretty good fall. He said this. He's performed almost identically as his previous two years and three of previous four years. What was Shirelli expecting? So he shows you a graph of Ryan Strom's career so far, and it's five on five points per sixty. His mm. his rookie season, one point four seven. His sophomore season, two point three six. Wow, big jump. The season after that, no, oh, back down to 1.33. Worst of his career so far, but maybe he'll rebound. Mm-hmm. The next season, 1.58. Okay. And then this year in Edmonton, 1.39. He is a 1.45 guy. Yep. Yeah, ish. Ish. He is ever so slightly underperforming. And had one year where he wasn't. Yeah, he had one really good year. <sighs> and How's then Jordan Everly? So here's the yeah here's the next one. But they I, got cap space that they aren't using. Well, and which brings me to <laughs> well, that's not true. They're using it on Al Montoya. Peter Shirelli said <laughs> in an interview, part of the reason for the Eberle trade was to gain cap space to fend off an offer sheet. The cap is at seventy five million dollars, and teams can exceed the cap by ten percent in the summer. Edmonton had sixty two and a half million dollars under contract in the summer before uh, Leon, and you don't have to account for potential bonuses when figuring out the summer cap hit. And then I'm, I'm reading from at Woodguy55 verbatim right now. Yeah. So they could have matched any offer as they had $12.5 million in usable space and $20 million if you want to count the, tw- the, ten, uh, the 10% buffer. The reality of Edmonton's cap is that it would be prudent to account for $5 million in bonuses by the time the season starts, but you don't have to worry about that until the season starts. If Peter decides to match a $10 million offer sheet for Leon, uh, for Leon, his team would be at $72.5 million in the summer. And even then, they would have time to trade to free up cap space for potential bonuses. So either, and this is again at Woodguy55, Peter Shirelli is A, lying, B, doesn't know how the salary cap works, C, his salary cap staff gave him bad information, D, made a preemptive shitty trade just in case uh, he had to make a shitty trade later to free up money, which in... Uh, in most probability, he wouldn't have had to make because nobody offers sheets anybody, and pretty much ever. And all of that, none of those answers are good. Who? And uh, you know what? Yep. At Woodguy fifty five, follow this guy's amazing. Uh, Alexei Kovalev uh, had a quote recently where he was basically like, "I don't even like watching hockey anymore because <laughs> I don't like what it's become. I don't like how it's evolved." Who is ruining hockey worse than NHL general managers? Who? They. I, th- I think a big reason for each lockout is NHL general managers. All the rules they put in place uh, penalize the players, but the players wouldn't need to be penalized. They wouldn't have to put all these rules in place if GMs just used their freaking heads, which they never do. Peter Shirelli is objectively a bad general manager, but he is a Stanley Cup champion as well. So at one point, he was the best See, are they ruining the NHL, or are they just trying to do their job? Everyone in a job, I would hope, is trying to do their job. Yeah, you so don't. I don't think it's ruining the NHL if they're just trying to do their job more creatively and beat the other 29 out of 30 what other guys. What about that says creativity? Well, he's just a bad hire then. Yeah. 
I, w- I wouldn't put blame but on them for really But there's so many so. Peter Shirelli's. Are you kidding me? Oh, I mean, we there's so there, many. There's gonna be bad. There's gonna be bad. Every, every, like no matter. There's what 30, right. there's 30 yeah. teams. There's gonna be people that 31. are bad and mediocre. 31. Yeah. That's right. I guess. I, I guess it just annoys me that bloggers who th- they hate in Edmonton. Are we getting to that? Uh, yeah, I've got please, the I've got the goal song please. here. Please, okay. Uh, it just bothers me that bloggers who do this as a hobby will be like, "So this is dumb. Watch for this to be dumb," and then. You know, sometimes it takes a year or two, but it's like, told you. Yeah, your boy Matt Henderson is a fun guy to follow. Um, because somebody said, it's, yep. how could, uh, it's too bad, Matt Henderson, you didn't predict this, this whole tire fire of a team with your spreadsheets. And he wrote, you're right, I could never have predicted an NHL historic worst penalty kill. It's my favorite stat to track. It's since 1979, uh, 1980, is when the penalty kill stat was officially starting to be tracked. By Which anybody. is crazy that it was only that. Yeah, seventy nine eighty. First season ever. Wow. So like Serge Savard is still on the Habs. Yeah. Like, this is... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, in last place since that stat was invented, uh, the Los Angeles Kings at sixty eight point two percent. That's their penalty kill. La- the Kings, what year? So they were actually that first year that the stat was invented. Oh. The 78, 80, 79, 80 Kings had a sixty eight point two percent penalty kill. Sure. And if we only go. Four spots higher to the fifth worst in the history of the stat being tracked. On Maple Leafs? We get the 1718 Edmonton Oilers oh. at 71.5. So if they just get a little possible? worse, they can set the all time record for worst penalty kill ever. What moves have the Oilers made this season? I know they did the Montoya one. I feel like they did a smaller one earlier in the year. Like, how, how unbelievably cheap. Would it be to get like some third or fourth line guy? Like uh, UC Yokin and Mike Camilleri, they did. Oh yeah, they did that. I don't know if either of those guys killed penalties. I don't remember. But like, like look at what the Penguins gave up for Riley Shan, or something like that. Like you couldn't have done that. You can't get a guy like. I still, th- I still say they should take a run at Sosh. Who is he hurt? What's happening there? Does Soshnikov exist? Is he still doing this? Do you I'm believe so the Oilers are this bad, though? I believe there were concerns that have come to light. Um, it, yeah, but they they're, they're probably bad? about average. I would say they're probably about average. They were the Stanley Cup favorite coming into the season. Yeah, were they? According to Vegas odds, yeah, I they were average to a little bit above average. But this penalty kill, it's unbelievable. Did they put too much into Cam Talbot's season? Like, was it too much to expect him to, like, play 70 games again and be awesome? I don't know. If somebody is, is capable of that, you can expect it from them. He did it once. You know? Like, there are a lot of players in this league do great once. Mm. Like, that's why the— Ryan Strom. I, hey. Let, David that's Clarkson. I, David Clarkson. <laughs> you know? Nikolai Kuhlman had a 30-goal season. Like, lots of players capture lightning in a bottle— and yada, yada, yada. Don't know how they do it. They're just incredible. Dude, Jonathan Chichu is a former 50-goal scorer. That guy came like out of the ashes like a phoenix and surpassed. I still remember like having a conversation with someone at our high school it, with like a month left in the season, and they're like, there's no way he's going to pass Yager. Come on. And he passes him with ease, with like time to spare before the end of the season. Like uh, everyone can do it once. But the Oilers went into the season banking on Talbot, and that didn't work out. And who knows? I mean, Talbot uh, had a good streak, I think, after coming back from injury or something like that. But then behind him, they had not. They had no backup plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Brassois, he's going to be great. Brassois is not great. Ah, well, nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I feel like they were too very teeny tiny cheap moves away from being in the playoffs no problem and they didn't do it like we were we were looking at uh, their penalty kill personnel from last year mm-hmm. like Anton Lander yeah like okay is Anton is the absence of Anton Lander <laughs> is the sinking ab- your season is the, ab- is the absence of Jordan Eberle sinking your season Andre Sakara so that, maybe it's that a few just things. doesn't make sense though 
That can't be enough. Like that's yeah. not it. That's why I don't think they're as bad as they are either. They Nobody can't be. Is historically this bad. No, no penalty kill from Mental. from the bottom. I think seventeen on that list was outside of the eighties. So, am I overreacting with Peter Shrill, You think? No, no, no. I think he's, questionable. I think moves. he's a little bad, but <laughs> <laughs> the team also isn't this bad. Also, they're losing two nothing to Nashville, and Nashville's one for two on the power play. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! The, hey, there's another team. Or sorry. Speaking of the power play issue, the, luckily the Leafs have a really good penalty kill mm. because they take way too many penalties. That's the catch-22 with Polak. Oh, we need penalty killers. Oh, he always puts us on the penalty kill. Ah, well, nevertheless. Wonder how Roman Polak's going to wiggle his way out of this one. <laughs> Roman wiggles his way out of it easily. And ah, into the penalty well. box. Carrick to the press box. Um, yeah, there's there's some things in Edmonton that are interesting, but I think the most interesting thing is, and Jesse, I forgot to ask you this before the show, so we're going to have to ask you to turn on the computer. And while Jesse's doing oh, that, I'm sorry. While, while Jesse's doing that, we need to talk about what happens when you lose. When you're losing... Screaming, crying. The Edmonton media ha- are, are not just tearing the team apart, they're tearing each other apart. And I count bloggers in that because... There, it's blogging is a medium. Therefore, if you are a blogger, you are a part of the media. Wood Wood guy was going at it with uh, was it Staples, Dave Staples. Really? <laughs> he just what? called him a disingenuous asshole. Did he really say that? <laughs> yeah, I was just. Whoa! I, don't know, I was just following along. Holy moly! That's that's as bad as things got here for a time. That it was never like that. There's a few really good Oilers bloggers you guys got to follow. Okay. Well, one because they're good. Two because. A lot of people hate them, and it's kind of great. <laughs> okay. How they deal with it is really good. Okay, how do I handle a loss? Yes? Well, they're ripping each other apart, and I do find it very funny that... Um, <laughs> I do find it very funny how quickly it happened. I just got a tweet at him. Uh-oh. Sportsnet texted me, <laughs> tweeted me, and they said, Are we still in a fight? About what? So last night they sent out a tweet saying Freddie Anderson makes a big save uh, en route to a uh, hopeful shutout. And I was just like, we're in a fight. And now they just tweeted me saying, are we still in a fight? I mean, we might be. We might be. Might be. Um, all right, let's put on our, our... So here's the thing. So, Oh, you don't? Uh, let's get you some. So here's the deal. I oh, guess... That's a microphone. Too. I guess Matt Henderson has made such an a noise, such noise with himself in the media. And th- th- this always makes me laugh when media go head-to-head because nobody, I think, besides the media cares. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when I hear me? When I hear one radio show, like, totally shredding another radio show. Like, not, and I'm not talking about, like, if I have a difference of opinion with a guy, I'll say I disagree with that opinion. Like the Breakfast Club versus Hot 97? Yeah. Whatever... What's uh, Ebro news? versus, you yeah. know, the breakfast club. Uh, you know, when you have those sorts of situations, fine. Like, I disagree with your opinion. Here's why I think it's wrong. Like, you, we bring up Steve Simmons often because he often says things that are belligerent and get our attention, right? It's just the way he is. That's his MO. In this particular case, there are, they're, they, they've taken it to parody song level. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's, I don't know. Man, I couldn't force words out of my head. Uh, right there, because I heard this. And are you ever just like paralyzed by something that you yeah. played yourself? Like I, I, I couldn't move. So w- at, when this started playing, archaeology guy. <laughs> Archaeolo- yeah, okay. Guy. It's spelled A R C H A E O L O G U Y. Matt Henderson is his name. Matt Henderson. He's only got sixty six hundred followers. But it should be a lot more than it that. It should be. And there is a Chris Russell goal song that a breakfast show uh, at the competitive, uh, the competing network plays every time Chris Russell scores. The dirty three letter. And I actually know the guy who who sings on this song because he's the producer of that show. Really? Yeah. And I um, my I actually texted my ex co host in Calgary. I'm like, this sounds a lot like. And she was like, Yeah, it's him. And uh, anyway, so he's the producer on that show. Oh my god! But they they basically describe Matt Henderson without saying his name, and this is what's so fun. So this is the Chris Russell goal song from Edmonton. <sighs> this is how intense hockey oh is. Oh my here. god! This is Bella Hadid levels of <laughs> uncomfortable. Hang on. 
SoundCloud never works when you're looking at it on Twitter. I don't know why. All right. Oh like I want to, I want to take my headphones off and run. Can you hear it? Jesse, can you? Two minutes. Enjoy. Oh my god. Well, he's taking all the blame because he stayed out west. Where all the bloggers come equipped with stats, no eye test. Getting ripped online, but he don't even blink. Take a web of slap shot and he don't even limp. He's just a Chris Russell going down to block. Just another shot. You take it in the crotch. But a guy with a blog who hates his course the most. Hope he fails every time so online he can boast. Give a toast to the man who wears number four. Except for one time in his own net he scored you know he didn't wanna score that goal then e-town twitter went right after his soul uh-huh. control zone exits headline the best reasons that the poho signed him up for four whole seasons chris russell he's the whipping boy but he stayed out west sucker because that d-man is a cowboy baby get your laptop out it's time to stop whining cowboy What's that? Say that again. He just wants to show off the fact he can sing. He can sing. The best. Or sorry, I meant to say he just wants to show off the fact he can sing. What the fuck is that? On top of accent? the bun on my burgers. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, sorry. The mustard uh, thing is uh, weird. Sorry. That's that's from the Nielsen show, uh, TSN 1260 in that guy's Edmonton. Wacky. What, Dustin Nielsen? Yeah. I think he plays a character. I hope so. Oh yeah. I don't know. You ever see someone on Twitter just say stuff and you go, "Oh, that's fun." Wait, do they mean it? I don't think he does. Because it's less fun if they mean it. But regardless, you know, I mean, the show is very successful. It does very well. So, you know, they've they've got their f- built-in fan base. And, you know, the thing about Chris Russell is he is what you would call, in, like, in, in the NHL terms, like a blue-collar guy, right? He is the hard-working, you know, bl- shot-blocking guy. Roman Pollock. And what's great is that they come <laughs> they come after the bloggers and get your laptops out and complain. And I think I mean it's playing your audience. It's perfect, right? That's what their audience is, is the guys that are like, oh, who are these spreadsheet nerds, right? Of course, of course. But I just find it funny that the they're not making parody songs about their terrible hockey team. It's about a blogger. Imagine they're going after each other. So- like what place are the Oilers in right now? Uh, I got my standings up. Third last. Third from the bottom. Third from the bottom. They're making a song about a player on, like, what, their second pair? That's embarrassing. That's freaking embarrassing. And then, no, it got, is it, that song really about Chris Russell, or is it about the bloggers, bloggers. that don't like Chris Rock? No, it's Russell. about getting attention for that show, which we have thoroughly given them. Yeah. And it went viral. And, you know, you gotta be... Also, you, I love that they parodied be, Chris Rock, who was like a walking parody of himself. Kid Rock. Kid Rock, that's what I mean. What did I say? Chris, Chris Rock. Rock. Chris Rock. Wrong Rock. <laughs> Why did I say Chris Rock? You ever see that picture? Kevin Hart. Look, <laughs> at this cool, look at this cool rock formation, and it's Kid Rock, Chris Rock, and The Rock. Oh, that's cool. All standing in the same <laughs> I room. I have not seen that. It's very strange. <laughs> but <laughs> that is, uh, whatever. I guess they're being rewarded for putting themselves out there. We gave them some attention. That is that is just shocking, though. But you know how many people in Edmonton, though? We're like, yeah! Uh, good for you. Good for you! No, the team's great. Didn't need to change, you're right. Anyway, it's a uh, it's an interesting time in Edmonton. Please please follow along and, and just pop your popcorn and watch. I hope their penalty kill gets great. Make the playoffs, make a run. Oh, man. Play the Penguins in the first round. <laughs> or, sorry, uh, Stanley Cup final. Mm-hmm. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. I want a heavyweight, <laughs> hot take <laughs> battle. I want to see a fist fight. In the press box, I are want those, to see a fist fight. I think those are the two most exciting hockey media markets for sure. Ooh, exciting or like most reminiscent of like Maury? They're just they're just wild. <laughs> they're just wild. exactly. <laughs> That's what makes them exciting. <coughs> Excuse me, Oilers, you <laughs> are the father. Ah, like I don't know. I don't, man. man. I it's feel insane. like 
I feel like there's a. Uh, I, I, name two markets like I, they always talk about again the Toronto Toronto. Me, Toronto media loves to talk about Toronto maybe Montreal but Toronto media loves to talk about how tough the Toronto media is there no. nothing like this is going on yeah Babcock's having a real hard time with the Toronto media get out of my face someone said that no I was being sarcastic oh. it's, it's starting to become a thing that it's just it's it's a lot of slow <sighs> pitch a lot of yeah Babcock yeah, it gets thrown questions underhand. Put it that way. The hardest questions he gets are like lineup decisions. Because that's all there is to talk about. No, it's. I think it's just that he's really good at driving the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it he was, is. It was kind of from uh, yeah, uh, Craig Huston's book. It's from his book that he just kind of drives the conversation. Yeah. Well, I uh, I am very, very interested to see how this plays out. Um, and you know what was great too and I don't know if we had the chance to talk about this I think this came out between the times that we've talked did we talk about the CC for Hall six deal? six days oh my lord okay yep uh, Shirelli's bad again <laughs> Shirelli's no. bad again is that Shirelli's fault? I actually think that that's I think that was the senator's fault oh but no Shirelli was going to do it you're right the yeah. senator screwed that up because Eugene Melnick was unreachable by phone and then the, and then the devil stepped up can you can you imagine? Imagine Cody CC for Taylor Hall. I was like straight up or like what what on top of Cody CC would be enough? Three firsts. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I personally like Cody CC. Because in NHL not, 17, oh, he had a potential, I think it was like an A minus. And I traded for Cody. That's wow. why Shirelli wanted him. Because in was, NHL 16, <laughs> he had a potential. Of an and if you trade for him in like two years, if you sim faster, if you don't want to play the 162, 164 games it would be to play two seasons. If you don't want to do that, just sim forward and then he'll be like a 93. <clears throat> and he'll be on your first line with there with Riley. Whew, generational yeah. first line right there. It's true. It's true, Jesse. That's why Good I point. would make that deal. I mean, I think that's flawless logic. Yes. I would and have definitely to start calling you Jess CC. No. <laughs> Jess Tradamus for his ability to see into the future. <laughs> CC into the future. Oh, C-C. no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that wasn't bad. <laughs> all right. All right. Credit where credit's due. That was good. Um, w- when you decide that he's enough of a leader in the locker room, do you award him with the CC? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, was, uh, then there's also, I think, and, and this came <laughs> out of the athletic too. Apparently, Matt Murray could have been. What are uh, his initials? Sorry. Apparently, Matt Murray could have been included <laughs> in uh, in the Phil Kessel trade. <gasps> Shut your front door. What? That could have happened. Now right. I haven't heard the podcast yet because it's the Athletics podcast. But Craig Custins and uh, I forget who else they were talking. Anyway, that. There might have been something about that, and I still have to hear that. So I haven't heard it yet, and I wondered if you guys had. No. Uh, yeah. Now, Matt, to, I, be, to be fair at the time, I don't, I don't know that know. anybody knew. I don't know that Matt, everybody knew Matt Murray was Matt Murray. Well, and even if they did, I think Pittsburgh knew, mm-hmm. and they, like, it's funny. You, you just hear, <clears throat> okay, Matt Murray would have been included in the deal. So we look and we go, oh, my God, the Leafs would have only had to pay uh, – you know, Phil Kessel, and, and in return, they would have got, like, Kapanen and all that. It was like, take out all the parts of that trade that mm-hmm. you currently know. Like, that completely changes the trade. And it might be the Leafs giving up a first. Like, you think Pittsburgh's giving up a first? Or, or any picks if they're giving up Matt Murray as well? Probably not. It changes the whole thing. Trades oh my God. probably look a million different ways before they're completed. And probably one version of the trade had Matt Murray in it. My so. favorite story along those lines is uh, um, remember how huge the Dion Phaneuf trade was? Yeah. I'm sorry, the first one that brought him to Toronto? Yes. My favorite story, and I don't remember where I heard it, is the final thing that got the trade done was the Leafs agreed to include Jamal Mares and the Flames agreed to include Frederick, uh, Frederick Sch- Schuster. <laughs> Like, imagine That's looking it. at all the parts of that I deal. would have done it without both of those yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> like, the two least impactful players in that trade. All right. We got a deal now. Like, imagine. But there are probably reasons we don't know. Mm-hmm. Could yeah. be contract. Could be anything. I would love to know. Um, 
Speaking of, we haven't talked in like six days on the show. Yeah. There was something that happened in between that I wanted to know what you guys thought about it because we never even talked about it. What was that? What do you think about that pesky kid from that foreign country called Sweden throwing his medal over the oh, glass? Oh, we yeah. We never got to touch it because it happened on the Friday. Good question. And then we did the podcast on the Thursday or on the Wednesday. And then now That's it's crazy. Tuesday. Well, first of all, congrats to Canada for yeah, winning the gold medal. Hooray! In the, in the least talked about World Juniors I can ever remember. The I, least I, attended as well. I yeah. didn't watch a second of the gold medal game. I don't think I saw Canada play once. I'm uh, not proud of that. I just... That's weird. Wasn't into it. Wasn't into it. Couldn't tell you a quarter of the team. Wasn't into it. Don't know what to tell you. I'm always. I'm almost always into it. Just couldn't be, but hey, they won. Hooray. Uh, as for the Swedish kid, who, who, Lias Anderson, we should n- name him by his name. He's supposedly pretty good. Uh, draft pick of the New York Rangers. You know what happened? Exactly what should have happened. Throws his medal over the boards. The guy who catches it takes a few hilarious pictures. As if he threw his medal over the board and it just happens to, to land in the hands of a guy wearing three jerseys. That's funny. He's wearing a USA jersey, takes it off. It's another USA jersey, takes that off. It's a Sweden jersey, and he poses for a bunch of pictures. And then what does he do? Gives the medal back. His mom actually went down and got it. Oh, really? Yeah, Anderson's mom went and got it, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm sure, like, that's another thing. Like, Anderson, like, that may mean nothing to him, the silver medal. But, like, give it to your mother. Yeah, mom, she took it all those 6 a.m. practices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moms love that that crap. Your crappy yeah. World Junior silver medal. <laughs> you know what I was my brain was about to go? Talk about your soccer trophies. Now your mom kept those. Not the same, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same. Not the same. But like uh, in a way, it's it's an interesting way to drive the conversation because that shows you the level of athlete we're talking about. Everyone's going, how could he be so disrespectful and blah blah blah. Man. Hopefully, like ideally in his mind, like Lias Anderson looking into the future to when he's 40 years old, looks is is hoping that this silver medal at the World Juniors is chump change. Like he's hoping to go to the NHL, make millions of dollars, win a couple mm. cups, maybe get a couple trophies. Like he, he's not going to look back and go, plus I got a silver medal at the World Juniors. You think he's going to look back on that with pride? And, it, it, and he's not going to look on, back and on that with any kind of affection. If I'm not mistaken, he also said that it was frustration from also losing the U17 and the U18. In oh, the wow. they also got silver medals in those two, so that sucks, right? There's a third silver medal or whatever. But here's here's the part that gets me. People take a, a situation, and this always happens as human nature. They apply their preferred narrative to it. Yeah. So and I got two major narratives from this. This is what I saw on Twitter. One. What a great leader. Hates losing. That's, that's passion. That's great leadership. Number two, what a terrible person. How disrespectful. He, he, should, be, he should be shamed. He should be banned from the tournament. <laughs> he should be banned from life. He should be sent to Mars. He's a kid, and he's not a kid. <laughs> We're two very good and both true arguments. <laughs> here's, here's what I would say. Yeah. It's neither. Throwing his medal into the stands did not make him a great leader. It's a thing. Throwing his medal into the stands did not make him a bad person or a criminal or disrespectful to the sport or the medal itself. Sometimes it doesn't make you anything. Sometimes you're upset and you're disappointed and you do stuff. And it doesn't, it doesn't actually, like, how many times have we done things that is, that are not reflective of our own character when we're frustrated? I was telling you guys, how many times have you thrown a video game controller? How many times have you slapped the fucking couch because you, you, you're you so mad at a video game? I punched the floor once, like in recent memory. I was As like, an adult a, yeah. in your house that you and the pay second for a mortgage I, did it, I was like, what's wrong with you? Does that make you... <laughs> I was like, are you okay? Does that make you a great leader? No. Does that make you somebody who we should send to Mars? Like, there are times where it, I'm like, I, hold on. I wish you didn't I answer my question. a little less. You didn't answer my question. Does that make you someone you should send to Mars? According to Sportsnet's Facebook page, yes. That's my point. Mm. Sometimes there's no narrative. Sometimes there's nothing deeper. Sometimes yeah. it's just, he was frustrated, this thing happened, period. I bet one day he will look back on doing that with regret, and then if you go, oh, so does that mean the silver medal means anything to you? He'll go, still no. Mm-hmm. Still no. Or maybe it will. Or maybe yeah. he'll say, you know what? 
it was a great learning experience because when you do lose, you learn. And I, I, and he might say, you know what? I had, to, I had to. You have to lose to learn how to win, right? We know that. If you, if you are learning to walk, you must fall on your face several times as a baby before you go. Okay, then here's how we do this. And and him losing will make him burn to win even more. Probably. And he'll probably look at that and go, you know what? I'm glad I lost that because it gave me even that much more motivation. No, okay. He'll look back in that and go, I'm glad I'm better now, and I'm still pissed that I lost. And that. I'm a millionaire. I, t- I tweeted this thing out. Uh, I lost a uh, hundred meter dash race at like a divisional track meet in elementary school that like I still think about every now and then because <laughs> it pisses me off because I went to regionals and I finished fourth, but I beat that guy, which meant I could have won first. Pissed me off. Pissed me off. Forever I'll have that second place ribbon. You ever heard the Bruce Springsteen song Glory Days? When I was 14 years old, I was lightning. I was the wind, Adam. Mm -hmm. I miss being fast. I'm not fast anymore. I miss being fast. It's okay, man. It's a shame. I was never fast. You better keep (laughs) yogging. Jesse, that is slow twitch. Those are slow twitch muscles. Yeah, this is. I had really good fast twitch muscles, quick twitch. Whatever. Listen, okay, I know that's nothing to you, Mr. Thousands of Baseball Trophies in his childhood bedroom. Excuse me, we're talking about the World Juniors. Yeah. Yeah, Anyway, (laughs) let's not apply narratives. Let's just say he got mad and he did a thing and let's move on. You know what takes a little bit of the fun out of the World Juniors for me is it it is the most diaper filling per capita of any tournament. Every every tournament. I don't know what you mean by diaper filling. Yeah, diaper filling? (laughs) There's a lot of sayings he has. No offense, I'm going to talk to you like you're not here. But there's a lot of sayings Steve's ha- Steve has sometimes, Jesse, where I'm like, I'm going to have to wait for what he says next to understand what he said before. Do you notice that? Can you give me an example? Diaper filling. Can you give me another example? I can't think of one right ah, now. You know how bad my memory is. Come on. Okay, fine. Sorry. Continue, my friend. Diaper filling. Nice traps, by basically, the way. Well, Thank you, I know. Holy moly. I got those Brock Lesnar traps. Um... <laughs> You and Brock Lesnar, same, same. level. <laughs> same. I, I, I slap him on same the back. Guy. I slap him on the back. I go, hello, Peer. <laughs> hello, hello, Peer Lesnar. <laughs> yes, Adam? No, I, I remember you and all those years you fought in the WWE and then you went to the UFC, won the heavyweight definitely championship. Didn't dope. Definitely didn't you know? dope. No, that, that, ruined, that, ruined, uh, that ruined my uh, my track career, was taking all those bumps. Oh, in, yeah. the U- in the UFC while you were sprinting. Goldberg uh, botched a spear and broke a couple okay, ribs. Okay, so let's get back to the... A, <laughs> let's get back. Diaper filling. Is, what about Mark Hunt? <laughs> what about... what? Man, his rants are great. Anyway, Enough. yes. <laughs> not, we gotta go Enough. down this path. It's funny. <laughs> when we... In like the early years of the podcast, Adam would be like, all right, guys, let's get back on track. Now he's like, stop! <laughs> Not because I don't love you. No, you're right. I just want to I want right. to know about your diaper filling, which I still don't understand what that means. Diaper oh, filling yeah. is just, you know how there's hot takes? A di- diaper filling is just a straight up shitty take. Or just a tweet. So a hot take? That could easily, <laughs> is a hot take? It's, no, it's different, different. Hot takes at least involve... Some creativity. Like Skip Bayless is the master of hot takes. Last, no, oh, sorry, I won't get into it. But last night, Skip Bayless was awesome. On fire! It he was, was so great. It was so good. Oh, yeah. he won I Alabama lost to lose my shit so a bad. Times. Oh, it was great. It was great. The Nick Saban what, shit. Was one awesome. of the tweets was, "Thank God Alabama doesn't have the Cleveland Cavaliers defense." Like, oh my where does that God. come from? It's just. <laughs> Dude, I said this a long time ago. When Skip Bayless tweets things, he goes to the people around him. He goes, "Watch this! Watch this! Watch this! Watch this! Watch this!" Watch this. Um, no, uh, uh, so a hot take. I'll be like, "Wow, I disagree with that immensely, but creative. I like that." Diaper filling is just me. Just everyone gets indignant about everything that happens. Uh, it's country versus country. There's a lot of cheap shots. There's a lot of immature stuff. Because they're junior players. And then you get into, wow, can't believe you would say that about a teenager. Classy. Wow, they're adults. The word classy is used more during the World Juniors than any other time on the hockey calendar. Any other time. Hands down, and it drives me nuts, and it makes me not want to participate. Makes me not want to participate. Also, let's let's stop with the whole... um, 
<laughs> my favorite my favorite thing is the is the uh well, you know, he's only this age. Mm. At a certain point, we do have to expect certain people to act a certain at a certain level, right? I don't expect I don't expect him to be super mature off the ice, but sometimes on the ice I'm like, "Okay, well, yeah, you're 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 better here. You're better than this." And it's okay to say, "Sorry, 17-year-old, even though you are 17, we can expect more from you." Someone on, on And team you made a mistake Sweden. and that's cool, but we can expect more. Someone on Team Sweden, two-hand slash with 7 minutes or sorry, 7 seconds left in a game that they were winning by two goals against the United States. The two-hand slash to the knee of Kyler Yamamoto. And I said, wow, what a dickhead move. And people had a problem with that. He's only 17, Steve. It wasn't even that. <laughs> it wasn't even that. It was like, well, they've been diving all game. So that's what you so, get. Yeah, so, so it's okay. Yeah. I'm allowed to assault you. <laughs> that's like crashing into someone's car and going, well, you were cutting me off. Yeah. Like it's, and, and oh, by the way, I'm 17. I just got my permit. Yeah. <laughs> Like how dare you hit a 17 year old it's like that vine notice how I turned to Jesse hey you know what you're insulting a future US soldier <laughs> have you ever seen yeah. that one <laughs> yes I have I have wow Jesse's the vine librarian check out the big vine on bread <laughs> that's, that's, that's amazing I, I try but I, I just I don't know I don't know I tweeted a few times during the world juniors uh, in the very little that I watched and every time I was like I, I don't want to play anymore yeah well and just because they're people are young doesn't mean they're beyond criticism yeah Exactly, and but I'm just uh, sorry. But then, the, no, the criticism is zero and a hundred. Yeah, <laughs> there's no in between. Yeah, it couldn't. No one. There's no such thing as a level-headed world junior. Constructive? Take. Would you say no? Cons- no constructive takes. Basically, yeah, and <laughs> it's great. It, every NHL mistake is broken down, like to the to a T. And here's how they can work on that in practice. And here's here are the adjustments they need to make in the third. But when you watch a junior player make a mistake, they just kind of go, wow, that was exciting. <laughs> that was an exciting play. And they don't bother to talk about the mistake that was no, made on the other no, end. Because no. they're like, well, they're young players. Yeah. They're yeah. not going to make these dumb they mistakes. Give, yeah. They're not going to give a shit about defense for at least another four or five years. <laughs> like, they don't care. They're 17. I don't know. Like, oh, this goalie stunk. All goalies stink in their teens. <laughs> They're sucks in. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph. Oh, never mind. Endless. Endless. You can see Leafs why Prospect I didn't Joseph play Wall. Leafs Pro- yeah. He, Joseph Wool gave up two shorthanded goals on the same power play. And I'm like, can we visit why maybe Sweden had two scoring chances on the same power play? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And why he was great all game before that? It's- Canada didn't have a uh, first round pick on their team. I'm pretty sure. They didn't? No. Yeah. No, that's not true. That can't no, be that's right. wrong. No? That's wrong. Eh. But didn't the Swedish guy, the Swiss. Or Swiss guy, rant about that and saying... he Yeah, he ranted about that. Maybe goalie? Mm. But I think Carter Hart is a goalie? I don't know. No, that By can't way, be right. Can't be right. What a dreamboat name. Carter Hart. Carter Hart. I feel like he's in an 80s movie and I'm, in, and I'm going surfing with him. Me and he, Carter Hart. He dated Mandy Moore in 1998. Yes. He yeah. was in A Walk to Remember. Carter Hart. I don't want to yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I... I uh, was he born in 1998? Oh, he's probably born in 99 or 2000. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just... You're, you're right. The World Juniors, it's a little extra with the, the hot takes. And also, you know what? The World Juniors always happen, dur- happen during Christmas, and I always view them as like, a, I'm going to enjoy this and not tweet. Yeah. Because that I, time I like is take, more valuable now. I like to take time off during that period just to get my head out of hockey Twitter. Just like the summertime. Remember when Julius Honka was a thing that we debated? And I say we. I wasn't a part of that. But I had to ask who Julius Honka was. And I love, and I love what I do. I genuinely do. And I have a passion for it. And I love talking about hockey. And I love interacting with people. And I love making videos and doing podcasts. And doing events and all sorts of things. But I got, I, I got more satisfaction out of very few things this year than looking at the Julius Honka shit <laughs> and just going <laughs> and putting my phone down and walking away from it <laughs> and enjoying the summer sun. Go outside. Oh, shit. Yeah. Got people true. tweeting about stats I've never heard of in the middle of July. <sighs> hey, um, no one's been signed for a week. Like, so it's not about that. So the last thing I want to talk about, fun fact, before you get to that, mm-hmm. <clears throat> Team Canada had 
eight first round picks on their team. Close, but <laughs> none of their goalies were first round picks. Uh, so Dangle, I was, I was Yo, right. Golf, golf Dude, claps to Steve Dangle. I just guessed. I don't know. If I was wrong, you wouldn't be like shame, shame. <laughs> Sorry. Also, you'd, you'd be marching through the streets naked, and we'd be saying, shame, shame, shame. shame. Also. Apparently, I just hit 10,000 steps. <laughs> so you can lie to that stupid Apparently. thing. Apparently. <laughs> when Alabama won the national championship for college football last night, Skip Bayless tweeted, <laughs> This is great. I still don't believe Alabama belonged in these playoffs. That's genius. Oh, it's so great. That's so great. It's so good. <laughs> how does how does he manage to rip a team who just won because the championship? Because they have the best coach in history. And just he like, found a way. Just like the Cavaliers have the best player. He rips the best guys. What do you got to have to be Skip Bayless? You're looking in the wrong places, young grasshopper. It's what he lacks, which is dignity. <laughs> All you need to have is a total lack of dignity. <laughs> and be believable can, when you say it. And be believable. You could be president. Absolutely. Jude, if you just confidence walk, if you just barge <laughs> through everything. What is confidence walk? Can you please send us videos of you confidence walking? Just <laughs> Go somewhere in confidence walk and send us the videos. I want to see them. <laughs> if Skip Bayless walked head on towards a car on the highway, that car would stop. They would have to. He's walking at them with too much confidence. What does he know that I don't? That's a good point. They would have to. And every car behind them would stop, and Skip Bayless would be fine. And Skip Bayless responds to nobody, I don't think, either. He just puts... Oh, no. He just goes, <laughs> bomb, <laughs> and then walks out of the room. <laughs> like It's like he throws a grenade. People are like, no, 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 no. Skip it's Bayless, amazing. Skip Bayless gets on the elevator at the first floor, <laughs> farts, and gets off in the second. That's what he does. That's his entire career. Entire career. And everyone else stays on for 38 more floors. Jesse, there was a tweet, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but he he said, I think, earlier on, and it was either earlier on or it was during the game, he said something along the lines of, Alabama, Alabama will implode because that's Alabama's identity. Wow. Yeah, he's like, that's a part of their identity. And it was just, like, it's the way he words them. It's like, uh, that's their identity. Ooh, it's so brilliant! Like he always picks on the Cavs and LeBron. Pick on the pick, best. Pick, pick on the big on, guy. Pick on yes, exactly the money in the bank best player all the time. Mm-hmm. Always. That's like what fifteen years worth of bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then the next, and then the next guy comes along, and you you go after him. How hard is it to say LeBron's bad? It hurt me to say it just now, but I, I have a little bit of dignity. The creativity, here's where the hard work comes in. Prove LeBron's bad. And Skip Bayless has spent show after show after show trying to find obnoxious ways to prove that LeBron is bad. How hard is it to be a brash asshole? The best. Ask, all, ask most of American media. I don't know. <laughs> like, is it difficult to be LeVar Ball? Is his life hard? Mm. I don't think it is. Like, is it full of effort? Is he straining? No. Every day going, oh. It's like when they put him on with Stephen A. Smith. It's like, oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Like, even Stephen, he renders Stephen A. Smith speechless. Come on. Have have Skip and LeVar ever talked? I hope. No. No, because that would be cool. That's never happened. That'd be cool. I'd like I to don't see know. that. I don't know if Just I want to see that. The two of them going at it. It <laughs> would contain very little. You're bad. I'm not! <laughs> I don't want to see but, that. But this is why you're bad. This is why you're bad. This is why you're bad. Big ball and brand! <laughs> Today, uh, the Ball family, because he's taking his two sons to Lithuania, Lithuania and they mm-hmm. played their first game for the Lith- Lithuanian club team. And uh, the, well, they, first they abandoned their league play to play in the Big Baller Brand tournament because he apparently convinced the entire team to go play in this tournament. So I'm providing this backstory. And in this tournament, <laughs> they, all the refs wore Big Baller Brand sh- shirts on their on their uniforms, and at center court was the Big Baller Brand logo. And guess how many people watched this live on Facebook at one point when I was watching the stream? I don't want to know. So at one point on the Facebook 50, stream, fifty three. <laughs> 53 people. That's it. At one point on the Facebook stream, when they're streaming this nothing game between a club team in Lithuania and a junior team, because they couldn't get an adult 
team to play them. They played a junior team. 123,000 people across the world were watching it, which is not bad. Let's go right back to the beginning of the show. Should I stop? <laughs> Should I just stop? That's amazing. That's not bad. You know what, man? You can hate on him. You can hate on the Kardashians. You can, like, if once LeVar, LeVar uh, it, once he's able to do this for like 10 years, like the Kardashians have, then we'll talk about greatness. Hate on the Kardashians. They're sure great at getting your attention and making a pile of money. How many? Like they, they are. He, LeVar's, in, like, he, they're doing the same thing, and you can't solve it for some reason, you what know? What was the number? 123,000? Yeah. For a, a Lithuanian club team. And versus a bunch of junior basketball so players. Amazing. They couldn't find grown men to play the big baller brand tournament. They had to get junior <sighs> basketball players. Oh my god. And that happened. Uh I'm I'm about to calculate something, but Apple broke my phone, so it's low. Here we go. Divided by Maybe you should just upgrade your phone, old man. Uh I want a free phone. Apple broke my phone on purpose. I That's want a free not phone. How that works. I don't care. I'm not paying for a new one. Free stuff. Uh okay, so <laughs> What is the average attendance of a Carolina Hurricanes game? Like 6,000 people. So I, I guessed 9,000. You're being generous, generous. I think. <laughs> I divided 123,000 by 9,000. Uh, so let's say that's true. So that game on Facebook Live mm-hmm. got as many viewers as the Hurricanes would sell tickets for about 13.6 home dates. Do you think... How many NHL markets, when they air a game on their local TV station, how many of them can't get 123,000 people to watch the game? 123,000 is like really, really good in Canada. Yeah. Unless, really, unless yeah. it's hockey. Anything else? Like, TFC doesn't do 123,000 on TV, I don't think. I think they would have for the playoffs. I'm not for sure the if they playoffs, do regular. Yeah, but like a regular season game? I don't think so. Probably not. I don't know. It's like that South Park episode. Where, like, Cartman is fighting Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> and Michelle Obama just goes, like, she just has a moment where she just goes, wait a sec, what the hell are we doing? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And everyone just, it's because James Cameron lifted the bar. You got to watch that episode. It's a great it's episode. Good. Raising uh, the bar. Steve Kerr, coach of the Golden State Warriors. Oh, called, the best. Called uh, Lamar <clears throat> the Kardashians of the NBA. And yep. he's probably not wrong. He said, if not. You dress them up in glitter, you'll everybody will watch. I think. Well, what does he great. do? My Listen. sons are great. He does that. He's, then he goes to the next city. My sons are great. <laughs> he is wildly entertaining, man. He just is. And then people go, well, I mean, they are successful. You gotta respect that. No, I don't. I I think I think you have to acknowledge it. Absolutely not. Absolutely okay, not. We're not gonna do acknowledge anything. the facts. <laughs> No, no, oh. He convinced I, Team Lithuania to leave league play to play in the big baller brand <laughs> tournament. His son is in his first year in the NBA. That's not a little impressive to convinced you? Convinced or just brought this aura that is I am LeVar Ball. Convinced. And people will pay attention. Convinced. He convinced with his aura. With, like, persuasive skill or just the fact that he got into an argument with the president? What does it matter? What does anything matter? I think it matters anything. a little. It should matter. Well, but that's but that's I don't my think point. Anything matters anymore? Is that not persuasive skill? No, I don't know. I don't, know. I don't but think convincing it's a skill. Team Lithuania to play in the freaking big baller brand tournament. You don't think that's some skill? You know what, man? There's some skill there. I'll, t- it's I'll tell you this. <laughs> you, you know what's easier for me now than it was ten years ago? Hockey arguments. Ten years ago, people would go, "You're what? No, no, no!" But now, just because of this little goofy hobby that I have, hobby, and and I work at Sportsnet, people go, oh, "That's a good point." Yeah, that's a good point. You know why? You know why? You know how he did it. And, he, and, he, if you have a little bit of clout, it helps. The Lithuanian he's team a lot. needs two things: they need talent, and they need exposure. And guess what yeah, they got? They you know what they got? They got two pretty talented kids. I don't know if they're ever going to be as good as their brother is. Yeah. Um, and they got a ton of exposure, which leads to money. So that is persuasive. And LeVar no, knows he that. He had those things. Right. And he took advantage of them. I get... Oh, okay. Should I revel in his cunning that he just took no, advantage it, of something? But at the very least, it must be acknowledged. Fine. No one's ever done this before. Fine. But it's also, is this the way you want to No! Do it? Absolutely not! But I, I will still and acknowledge and go, all right. No, I'll, I'll all be right. like, hey, you're doing something wrong. 
because that's not the way you want to do it. That's not the type of parent you no. want to be. And I would never. So draft I would never be like, oh yeah, that's I'd, okay. That's I'd never impressive. draft a kid with a parent like that. I've never, no. you know what I mean? Like you know, I get, I get what you guys are saying. Yeah, but you have to say you have to at, at least marvel a little bit at the fact that it's even happened at all. I marvel, but it's not. It uh, doesn't have to be a positive you, marvel. You can marvel at a, fi- a house burning down. Fine, but you're still marveling. <laughs> Right at a house burning down. Fine, as long as we're on the same. We are. Page. We are. We agree. There is okay. so much fire. <laughs> <laughs> People might be dying. All you right. Know? All right. Hey guys, guys, guys. People hate playing in Winnipeg. Oh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. All right. Did you know that it's dark and cold there? Did you know that they're not even sure that Winnipeg's got Wi-Fi? You know who said that? Some team from California. Some team from the tech sector in California. And I think uh, in this story and in this clip. And it's the San Jose Sharks, by the way. You see the crazy uphill battle that teams like the Winnipeg Jets have to face when it comes to recruiting players and free agents and stuff. Hockey players for as tough and as gritty farm boys that they're sold as. They're soft, just like you and me. They want to tan in the sun. They want to walk around in the street with their shirt off. Just have kind of a nice time. Do you want to hear... They're uh, just pa- like you and me. That's all they want. Do you want to hear Paul Maurice's reaction? Oh, I'm getting to that. Oh, okay. You got it? I got it. Cool. And it's great. It's really great. It is really great. But there's a couple things I want to bring up. Is there audio of them saying this? Or is it just... I think it's... No, it happened on a survey, and then they like tweeted out on some thing. Yeah, there's it's just... Oh. Text. So there's no actual audio. Paul Maurice, I think, is the perfect classy response to it. It actually is really great. So we'll great get, quote. We'll great. We'll get to that in a second. But, but, I have a couple things here. Just a couple things I'd like to bring up. Mm. In outside of s- hockey, and even actually for hockey, hockey for a while here, it was almost impossible for the Jays and the Raptors to bring in free agents. Well, the Raptors was hilarious. Raptors is especially fun. I want you to do it. Do me a favor. Jays too. Do me same, a favor. Look up situation. what Vince Carter said about Toronto. Tracy McGrady, I think. What Tracy McGrady said about Toronto. What David Wells, who was a Cy Young winner at the time, said about Toronto. Who is the guy who the Raps got for Vince Carter and he just never showed up? Uh, Alonzo Mourning. Yeah. That was he just one. didn't come. And what's interesting That's about... so funny. Patrick, Patrick Patterson, I think, in an interview, I think it was Patrick Patterson who said... Um, he, it was, no, it was a Players' Tribune article. And he said when he got traded here, as soon, they crossed the border in the plane and he was looking down at the ground and he said, as soon as this plane lands, I'm calling my agent and getting it, getting the hell out of here. And he ended up staying for like four years. Um, I think it was, uh, DeMar DeRozan was on, uh, Wodge's podcast. And if you don't, Wodge is obviously Wodge. Wodge Bomb. Yeah. Wodge. Wodge. Sorry. Wodge Bomb. He was on his podcast and he said... The season that they traded Ru- Rudy Gay and they lucked into going to the playoffs because they all of a sudden took off. Had that Kyle Lowry deal gone through, DeMar would have asked for a trade out of town at the end of that season too. Toronto, I'm using as an example because it's personal to me. I grew up here. Yeah. If it offends you that there are certain players that don't want to play in your city because it's too cold, it's too Canadian, it's too whatever. And and this goes for American cities too, because I think people in Minnesota know a thing or two about snow and ice. Yeah, like the Minnesota Timberwolves are a team. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, so. What is interesting? How much colder is Toronto than New York? Is, is Detroit not geographically more northern than Toronto? I don't know about that, but it's close. It's not, or maybe it's, maybe I'm thinking of like the state. Well, think of about Michigan. Buffalo, man. Buffalo gets gets it hard. I think when northern it comes to snow. Michi- Michigan is yeah, further yeah, north, but yeah, I don't know about yeah. Detroit. So. My point in pointing all this out, and it's a long point, but stick with me on this one, is if you are offended by somebody not liking your city and not playing there, grow up. Wow. Wow. There are tons of people that aren't going to like. I, I remember I've lived in other places in this, in this uh, country. It's, and, it's and prerogative, right? It is, sure. But it is constantly people going, I hate Toronto. Everybody from Toronto's an asshole. Uh, you know, Toronto's a terrible city. I would never grow. I, would, I have friends that say Toronto is a bad city, and I would never raise my kids here. It's the grass is always greener, right? 
a, a big reason that my wife lives in this country is her parents went, ah, it rains too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Colin. So they came to a place where it snows too much. And you know what I bet they would have killed for last week when it was minus 25? Rain. A nice warm rain. <laughs> <laughs> a nice temperate rain. <laughs> My point in saying this, and I understand, I understand the offense taken, but Winnipeg, Winnipeg, if you, I don't think they're offended. I don't think, and nor should they be. Embrace what you are. If people don't want to be there, fine. If they have an opinion about your city that's negative, fine. Ask anybody in Toronto. All we get are negative opinions about our city, man. Ask people from in strangers. New- all we get it. All people, just met. New- people from New York, people from Chicago, people from LA. That's all they get is negative opinions. And I think you can name any city and you can say the same thing. The point about what what made me laugh is it doesn't bother me that San Jose players said we don't like playing in Winnipeg. And you know why? Winnipeg's 10 points up on them in the standings. If Ooh. I'm if I'm a player, the place <laughs> I want to play is Winnipeg. Ooh, that was a wild bomb. No more Woj bombs. I'm just saying, wild man. Bombs. Look just look at the team Winnipeg has. And if it was that bad to play in Winnipeg, do you think any of those guys would have resigned? Justin Bufflin didn't need to resign. He didn't, want to say Mark he didn't, Shifley? Why did Mark Shifley, right, Shifley resign? Didn't need to. Well, that guy played in Barry, though. Oh, no, I just offended Barry. Woo! Sorry. That's my point. It's the, yeah. don't, so, okay, so what? A, a, a person doesn't like your city. So flipping what? You know what? I think, I think Paul Maurice handles it very well. He does. Very calmly. Uh, Shall we listen to Paul Maurice? Let's listen to Paul Maurice. I think he's got a great perspective on this. Where is this from? By the way, uh, good question. Um, I'm not Tyler. A uh, Tyler Esquivel, Mr. Skyval on Twitter. Ah. He's the video production coordinator of the Winnipeg Jets. There you go. Oh, brilliant of them to release this themselves. Okay, so I, I didn't read it, so it's it's dangerous to comment on the on the exact. I heard it's cold and dark. Well, that happens in Canada occasionally, pretty regularly every winter. It's dark at night. Yeah, that happens pretty much around the world. (laughs) I don't think any coach, any player, trainer, referee should ever complain about a day in the National Hockey League. You know, we got a sold out building. Pretty sure that all goes into hockey related revenues and everybody cashes their check. The thread count at your hotel isn't right or your Frappuccino isn't (laughs) froth, right? I don't even know what a Frappuccino is, but my point being... (laughs) We got nothing to complain about. Pretty good life now, every day. Every city is pretty darn good one. Now here, leave that there. So that was released by the Jets in house. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, over two thousand retweets, forty five hundred favorites. Uh, I don't think uh, the Jets are bummed that this got out there. Oh no, they're absolutely and, using this to their advantage. And as I said, when you look at, and no offense to the Sharks either, but. When you're I entitled to your opinion, when I look at if you're asked, I'm like, not. Geez. I'm not going to be out here bashing San Jose, the city, because I'm sure it's a beautiful place. I've never actually been. I've always wanted to go. California rules. Um, but what is interesting is that the the I think the San Jose Sharks, although they have good pieces and they've got Martin Jones and they've got you know Mark Edward Vlasic or whatever. If you look at the futures of both of those franchises from a hockey perspective. Which team do you take? Ooh, the Sharks draft real well. I take real the, well. I would take the Jets, but the Sharks draft real okay, well. Okay, but I'm, I'm yeah. talking right now. I'd take the Jets. But so I, you, I, I, you know I'm, what? All I'm saying is I wouldn't if rule you're the Sharks Winnipeg, out. Just look at the standings and go, hmm, hmm. Oh, we're number Doesn't one. Matter. Interesting. I think, we're, no. we're first in our division. Paul Maurice Interesting. just kind of put it on, on them and... For sure. But the he fact there the was any cut. outrage about this at all is what bugs me. I don't Come think on, there guys. Yeah. I don't think there was that much outrage. 2,000 retweets, guys? I think if it was... I Okay, you know what? I think there was outrage, but it wasn't expressed. If that makes sense. Like, I didn't see a whole lot of... Like, really angry Jets fans. But I bet a lot of people who said nothing went... Ha, ah, and pressed that retweet button. Because they're like, you tell them, Paul. Mm-hmm. You tell them. Anyway, in, that, in no, life... That's a brilliant move. And th- this is a rallying cry. For sure. Heading into this the back awesome. half of the season. No, this it's is the best thing for them. It's brilliant. If, and this goes for anybody in any city. If someone takes shots at your city, you'll be okay. <laughs> you'll survive. You'll be all right. 
I guarantee it's not worth getting mad about because sometimes people aren't going to like the thing you like yeah. or not going to like where you live. Also, it's dark and cold. Okay, well, you being mad about that doesn't make it not true. It's it, Yeah, and, and what's also, interesting... most Canadians take pride <laughs> in that. Okay, did you tweet about it being minus 20 in Toronto? Yeah, I think so. Did you get responses from all over the country going, yeah, well, it's minus 40 here! Yeah, I did. So, ask yourself... If you are, if you were offended by this, if you're the same kind of person who would be like, well, Toronto doesn't know cold. Oh, I'll, yeah. sh- I'll tell you cold. The one upmanship. Yeah. I'm from Northern Saskatchewan. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you about cold. No, I get that your literal Arctic tundra is colder than this but place. But you live there. But it's also cold here. Yeah. Well, then, I, again, the, the thing I would say to the cold and dark thing is that, well, of course players only see cold and dark because they're only in for the, the game that day, and then they leave that night. The in thing, the middle of winter. Yeah, it's not Winnipeg's fault. No. Anyway, <laughs> let's let it go. Let's do the press conference, shall we? Oh, you're back to doing my Go Jets. You're right. Go Jets. New Year, same me. Go freaking Jets. <laughs> cold and dark That's and funny. number one. Um, the one question... The only question of today's press conference. The question is, will Chris Kunitz be in the Hall of Fame one day? No. If he wins one more cup with the, with the Lightning this year, he'll have five Stanley Cups. I don't think we're kicking a... And a gold medal. Oh, my God. I don't think wow. we're kicking out a five-time Stanley Cup champion and a gold medalist out of the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but is Chris Draper in the Hall of Fame? He should be. He's a gold You're medalist right. and a... How many? Time? He's got. A, time? I want to say two or three cups, at least one Olympic gold medal. That's a resume. Should Kirk Maltby be in the Hall of Fame? So oh, no. This no. is our most upvoted no, question. No. 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 He, no. How many points does Chris Kunitz have? Chris Kunitz on his career has two hundred and fifty-five goals, hmm? three hundred and thirty-six assists, five hundred and ninety-one points. No. Not even in the same stratosphere. He's gonna like, he's look at, at Mark Recchi, and he had to wait to get in. Where's Mark? Recchi? Mark Recchi's like a top twenty scorer of all, all time. time. Yeah. Dave Anderchuk had over six hundred goals, and he had to wait from like what was it, two thousand six oh, till insane. this year. It was wrong to get it. It was, it was objectively wrong. He was the only retired six hundred goal scorer to not be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. That's unbelievable. And he had to wait over a decade to get in. Chris Kunitz isn't getting in. Isn't get, Think of all the players who still aren't in. Jonathan Taves. Patrick You're Kane, right. Not in the Hall of Fame yet. You know who's another guy who had a great uh, <laughs> uh, Stanley Cup resume and I would argue had a better playing resume than Chris Kunitz? Although it's hard to compare because he was a goalie. Chris Osgood. Like Chris, there is a line to get into the Hockey Hall of Fame. And when he retires, Chris Kunis will be at the back of it. <laughs> that doesn't take anything away from him as a career. Not making the Hockey Hall of Fame doesn't mean you're bad. <laughs> he will still be a four, maybe even five or six by the time he's done, time Stanley Cup champion. That's incredible. Why can't he just be that? He's got a whole nucky sandwich full of rings. He's got about a he's got a handful of rings. Just doesn't have it on the thumb. Mm-hmm. But who wears a ring on a thumb? He will. I, I say He's Chris Kunitz has a year. full hand. He has a practical hand full of rings. You ever got a five star growing up? You had your shirt off and someone just slapped the back. Oh, Imagine why did that five. have to have a nickname? Remember the fi- but you a five star with those rings? I feel like that would soften the blow. Really? I don't know. Mm. I hope to never find out. Um, you can ask Chris Kunitz to do it for you for one of your viral videos. It'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> Chris, slap my bare skin! <laughs> what are you doing? Take your hands off me! Yeah, sorry. I feel like Why? that might put an end to my career very quickly. Sorry. Why isn't five cups valued more than 500 goals? It's a team thing. It's a team thing. It doesn't it mean something that five times he was on a team that the, won the Stanley Cup and he was a key piece every single time? The one, the one thing I would say... Uh, is, you know, I compared him to Mark Recchi. And one of the remarkable things about Recchi is he won a cup with three different teams. And if he wins with Tampa, Chris Kunitz will be able to say that. Mm -hmm. So, and also by the end of his career, how many points is he going to have? He's going to be, you know, 800 points? 38. Mm, Okay, maybe not. 
And he's at 591 points. Okay, so he'll be at 650. <laughs> and uh, he's going to reach 1,000 games if he plays one man, more season. Man, a 38-year-old burned the Leafs the other night. <sighs> well, we got a 39-year-old, so it's all good. Shoot, I pressed the, the button on the chair there. <laughs> um, uh, I don't think he'll get in. There's lots of guys with cups. Okay, who question. aren't in yet. Montreal Canadiens won, I was at... Four Stanley Cups in a row or five Stanley Cups in a row at the end of the 70s? I think they won five in a row like two or three times. <laughs> but at the end of the 70s is my point. Yes. Before the Islanders dynasty, before the Oilers dynasty, it was the Montreal Canadiens. I think they won at I'll least say it I'll ended tell you in 79. I think it ended in 79. Or maybe it started, I don't know. They had an incredible run. Incredible run of The cups. entire time, Ken Dryden was in net. He had a backup goaltender. And that guy's got five rings. That guy has, for all those Stanley Cups they won, I just checked. One, they, two, three, four. They only won four in a row from 76 to 79. So from 76 to 79, only. it was the same guy. And he, he actually played in each season well over 20 games. What's his name? Michael Lacroix. Cool. He's got four <laughs> rings. Is he in the... Is he in the uh, See, but he wasn't a key parse... Or like Chris Kunitz. Was Chris Kunitz a Chris? Chris Nealon. Nylon. Nylon. Knuckles. I would argue that Kunitz meant more to the teams he played on. And he was Knuckles Nylon? Or than than the goalie that played that backed up Ken Bryan? The backup goalie. The guy who sat on the bench and got everybody hot dogs. But this was different, man. And ate them because it was the 70s. He went (laughs) and smoked cigarettes. In the last year of that run, in the last year of that run, in last year of that run, he played 34 games. He went 22 and 7. Chris Kunitz played 82. (laughs) 22 and 7. Did Chris Kunitz go 22 and 7? Season before that, 22 and 3. The season before that, backup goalie, 22 and 3. Yeah, but Chris Kunitz went platinum with no features. Yeah, he so. did. J. Cole, uh, man. Is Chris <laughs> Kunitz J. Cole? <laughs> Bas- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Underrated and overrated at the same time. <laughs> I saw somebody tweet the other day, how can you not be a fan of J. Cole? And the person retweeted, because I have ears. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that's a bad burn, even, or like a good burn, even if you like J. Cole or you don't. That's funny. I like a few of yeah, he's fine. J. Cole songs. I sound hip when I say those things. Yeah. Is that the only question? That's it. We can have other questions, but There's nothing else. That was the silly. main question. Silly on the on the Steve. Yes. Okay. Adam. Mm-hmm. Okay. Babcock is out sick. The Leafs put you in charge as coach for the game. No, oh, no. What do you do? You're allowed to make call ups. Ooh. No one's injured. <laughs> I like no, that. No. No. I don't. I don't want to rock the boat too much because it, already I assume the team is going to receive me with some hostility because already you like they, playing this they, too much. They've gone from <laughs> NHL head coach Mike Babcock to some schmuck video blogger Steve yeah. Dangle. So I don't make any call ups. <laughs> I don't want to rock the boat too much, <laughs> but I definitely scratch Roman Paul. <laughs> Dermot's in. Okay. Carrick's in. Okay. What's your top line? So I'm still hurt. I uh, I leave the lines. Except oh. I, I only make the change that I suggested earlier. Hmm. Kamara for Brown. Okay. Or maybe even just to massage their egos. You know, to ma- to I'm going to people manage right here. That's what a good coach does. Mm-hmm. I'll leave the lines as they are, but I will adjust the time on ice as I see fit. Mm, in game. So it's not really like a thing. It's just, no, this is how the game's going. I'll play these guys. Yeah, this is how the... I'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll just feel it out. But it's going to be really strange because, like, feeling it out is going to seem a lot like <laughs> I had, I predetermined <laughs> playing Matthews for 25 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I think the only thing I would change is the same. Is I would play Matthews more. I would play him 25 minutes, but I'd play him more. I'd sit in black. 20 for sure. Um, and 30, let's be real. You know what I would do? I would, I would right now, I'd like to see what Lilligren looks like. <sighs> no. It's too early. Why is it too early? It's, it's one game, man. You have other guys. Who? 
Dermot. Oh no, Dermot <laughs> would be in too. Who are you sitting? Well, Carrick's out. And no, Carrick's there. And Zaitsev's. Oh, are they fully yeah, healthy? No, it said no injuries in the question. No injuries. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So you're not you know, oh, Carrick's not even injured everybody either. Just get lower in All right. Well, okay. So Zaitsev's in. Yeah. Then my bottom pairing. Ooh. Ooh. I don't hate Carrick Boardman together, but I would try. Lilligren, I would love to do Lilligren Dermot just to see what it would look like at the NHL Scratch level. Scratch Martin, seven defensemen. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Matt Martin. No, but no, but maybe. I want, Matt Martin. <laughs> no. I want Matt Martin on the bench just for the jokes, man. I want to be entertained by him. Assistant coach Matt Martin. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, so you, I'm telling you, you void his contract. He's gonna be a great sign him as an assistant coach. He's gonna be a great broadcaster or a great coach one day. See, I'd rather be assistant coach with Connor Carrick because mm. I feel like he wears a suit better. He's got those glasses, looks the part, and he'd bring like a nice medium roast to the game so you could have a coffee before. That dude has his own freaking coffee, and we would be the coffeeest, most jacked. You mean like his own line of coffee? Coaches? Yeah. No, if you go to, um, I forget what the place is. It's called like Carrick's Fuel or something. Yeah. Do you know what the restaurant is in Toronto? There's no, a, I there's tried a restaurant where you can have your own yeah, coffee. There's, a, there's a restaurant in Toronto where you can order a Carrick coffee, and I will tell you in 18 seconds what this restaurant is called and the bulletproof coffee that it's called the Simple Kitchen. Okay. And it's called Carrick's Fuel. A delicious anti-inflammatory take on the classic bul- bulletproof coffee, espresso, uh, collagen. Is that that's Co- a yeah? And it's a, it's his favorite it's like supplement. The stuff you inject in your lips. MCT oil, cocoa powder, turmeric, cinnamon, sea salt, and is topped with a homemade froth cashew milk. Every cup pur- purchased will give you a chance to win a signed stick by Connor Carrick. That's at the Simple Kitchen in Toronto. That's kind of cool. Being a Leaf has to rule. Rule. It's not even an everyday player. And he's got like his own line of stuff. It's pretty cool. As he should. As he should. Like, that's smart of him. There he is right there. Who's that? The owner of the place? Sorry, nope, no one. I no believe one that is that coffee. That's his, I want to uh, try it too. That's his significant other. Oh, is it? There's, oh, is it? There's the cutie pie. He's getting. Uh, he's he's, he's cute. Tired. Yeah. This guy. He's cute. Oh, and there's the coffee. It's nice. And there's very Instagrammable people. Oh my god! It's only six bucks for a bag. Yeah, that's pretty no, sweet. No, for uh, a cup. Oh, for a cup. Carrick, yeah. it's, bullet, it's a bulletproof coffee. Carrick definitely it. resigns in Toronto for league minimum. I think he loves it here. <laughs> he just loves it way too much here. Come on. Look at that. Right? Imagine that takes off and that's his thing. Just being <laughs> that guy? Who was the last player to be a truly successful business owner? Or like businessman? Ty Domi. While actively playing? Ty Domi. Has made a career off. I'm a leaf. Yeah, but after. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't well, know. I guess every Leaf has made a career off of I'm a Leaf, right? Hmm. Pretty yeah. much. Dude, Colby Armstrong was a Leaf for approximately <laughs> 16, 17 minutes. Yeah. And, well, that and his delightful personality. And he's also very good at what he does. And boy, does he make a, a hot Daenerys Targaryen. <laughs> oh my god, that was so funny. Yeah. But, like, if you're like, if you were, like, a third liner... On the Minnesota Wild. He played Wild. with Crosby, though. No, no, mm-hmm. but wait. Like, if you were a third liner, so did Paul Bissonnette for, like, two seconds. But, like, <laughs> and, and look Paul, at him, though. He's doing Paul fine. Paul Bissonnette is a Hall of Famer. Hall of Fame Twitter account. <laughs> That's he played sure. for the Wheeling Nainers. Holy smokes, did he have a funny story the other day. But, uh, like, yeah, if you're, like, some third liner from the Minnesota Wild, had no ties to Toronto whatsoever, and you walked up to the executives of Sportsnet and went, let me on TV, it'd probably be harder... <laughs> To convince them to let you on, then if you were like, "Hey, I'm former Leaf, Colby Armstrong," I'm just saying that's what you need to do with your channel. Become a Leaf. Yeah, you need to play for the team, man. Okay. That's that's what we need to. Well, get. I got one game under my belt. <laughs> that's how we expand your channel. You become an NHLer. Shoot. Why didn't we think of this before? And athletically, I'm already supposedly on the tail end of my peak. Right. So I got an uphill battle here. I don't know if this is gonna work. And on that note, we'll end the show. <laughs> we'll end the show there. Well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Winnipeg, nah. feel good about yourselves. You know why? You're first place. Just walk around and say first place all day. First place. Oh, it's that. Oh, sorry. It's cold and dark. And first place. Okay? Just throw that out there. Also, love you guys. Blackhawks last place. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, wow, man. Still only a point out of the playoffs. Serious? Yeah. Uh, just... Wait, we have some breaking news. Oh, why do we? Brent Seabrook's been traded. No, he hasn't. You're joking. To the Leafs. Shut no, up. he hasn't. Up. Oh my then. god, you scared me! <laughs> you believed that? <laughs> it's the Leafs, Adam. Yeah, Blackhawks are in last place, but they're one. Oh, yeah, they've got forty-six points. Colorado's got forty-seven. Colorado's in a wild card spot. By Underrated the way. story: Nathan McKinnon has been the best player in the world for a little yeah. bit. He's yeah, in Mrs. Ridiculous. Daniels' pool. <laughs> oh, look at that! Is that? Oh yeah, Winnipeg, first place. First place. Put that out there. Hey, love Matthew's you guys. Still better. Uh, <laughs> and Patrick Liney quietly having an amazing year. Uh, we will 100 talk- points tonight on the career. Patrick Liney. Oh, wow. Yeah. There you go. Matthew's already did that. Uh, we're out of here. We love you guys. Matthew's is a bum. We will talk to you next no, time. Sure. We'll talk to you next time. I'm wrapping this up. Okay. <laughs> Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W Y L D E. And at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.